Gupta and I'm a faculty in GSU school. So again, this is the endeavor on the part of the GSU school to help the aspirant to fulfill their dream. So in this session, we are going to discuss various skills and obviously knowledge how to tackle the question. So in this part, I am going to take up the question with respect to the history, and uh, in between you can also write the uh, answer in the comment box. Uh, similarly, you know, simple. When I will discuss the question, I will give certain background, and uh, when I will give the background, uh, till that time you can post your answer so that this uh, uh, this can be a two-way communication between you and me. And moreover, uh, you can also post your, your query. I can see your query, so you can post your query. And uh, as soon as I get the uh, you know your query, I will try to resolve it. So without any delay, let's begin. So let's begin with the question number forty-one. Question number forty-one. And uh, you can write the uh, answer in the comment box. Again, the question is taken from the ancient India and. Uh, there is a Junagadh inscriptions. I hope all of you have read about the Junagadh inscriptions. And uh, there is a, you know, in the Junagadh inscriptions, there is a wonderful story of Sudarshan Lake. And uh, this lake was created by uh, many people and the many king. So I hope now you got the background from where the question number forty-one is taken. So if you if you look at the question. Uh, Certainly, you will find out there are certain people like you know we have Pusigupt, we have Tusap, and we have Suvisk. Uh, again, understand uh, when we talk about Sudarshan Lake, the Sudarshan Lake was created by the Pusigupt during the reign of Chandragupta Maurya. So during the reign of Chandragupta Maurya, Sudarshan Lake was created by the Pusigupt. Now, what happened during the reign of Asoka? During the reign of Ashoka, this Sudarshan Lake got damaged and repaired by the his governor called as Tusap. And again, during the reign of Rudra Daman, his governor Suvisak uh, repaired it. So, if you look at what is common point, common point between the all these names, they are you know all these governor they are associated with the repairment of the Sudarshan Lake. And what was this Sudarshan Lake? It's a water management, right? It's a conservation of water and the management. So I hope now all of you got the answer for question number 41, 41, right? The, the answer is B. All of them contributed in water conservation and the management. So again, the question was little bit tricky. Uh, most of you have read about the Sudarshan Lake. And this question is, you know, asked in a different way. Sometimes even UPSC do the same thing. So I hope now you got the idea, right? So hello. So these are the name. They are associated with the maintenance and the repairment of the Sudarshan Lake, right? So I hope now the this this uh, question number forty one is clear to all of you, right? Now uh, the answer key, uh, the answer key will be uploaded after this session. Definitely, yes, uh, it will be uploaded after the session. Right? Don't worry about it. Is there any doubt with respect to question number forty-one? I hope now the message is gone very clear to all of you. Right? So let's move to the question number forty-two. Forty-two. The question is all about the numismatic. All of you know uh, numismatic means what? Numismatic means the study of coins, right? Study of coins. And which was the first Indian coin? It is the punch mark coin, right? So the question pertain to the question pertain to the punch mark coin, right? Question number 42.
pertain to the panchama coin right so uh, now pranjay says the answer is c uh, uh, anybody else anybody else do i need to wait for the answers question number 42 is it the answer c we have one answers by given by the pranjay right so as all of you know this question is pertain to the uh, panchmark coin uh, we can say you know it is it is all about the coins right uh, so let's uh, discuss the answer here the manufacturing of the first panchmark coin date back to around 6th century bc and obviously this, this is done during the period of maha janpadas right so absolutely correct and what we need to find out correct right so we all know that first indian coin is called as the panchmark coin it is panch you know uh, panch does not mean you know uh, the the five mark panch basically means the the mark or the symbols were panch on the coin right and uh, what you have to understand what is the timeline here the timeline is maha janpadas right and thus definitely the number 1 a uh, statement with respect to version number 42 is definitely correct right now largest number of coins made of various object were issued in the post maurya right whereas the largest number of gold coin were issued during the gupta period again very very important concept right this is again uh, okay sort of uh, again to make it two way discussion that is the way anyway we will try to you know uh, uh, do it as soon as possible right uh, but again to create interest and you guys have you know uh, i mean anyway let's uh, continue here now there is a very important concept here that uh, when we talk about post maurya we have large largest number of coins in the post maurya but again when we talk about gupta period we have largest number of the gold coin for example it's a very you know well known fact the largest number of gold coins were issued during the time of the gupta period on the other hand we have largest number of coin during the post maurya right so again that is also correct and what we need to find out correct and thus question number 42 both 1 and 2 so therefore the correct answer for 42 is the c both 1 and 2 i hope now all of you will you know comfortable with the question number 42 uh, any any question with respect to 42 you can write down in the chat box whatever query you have whatever query you know you can write in the chat box let's move to the question number 43 question number 43 and question number 43 is associated with the guild right so all of you know what is guild guild are the association of merchant or, the, or it is the association of artisans or so on right so again this this question is connected with the you know uh, right this question is connected with the guild now question number 43 uh, right what we need to find out we need to find out correct code right okay panini refer to commercial guild as a samasthan and merchant who was a member of such a guild was known as a samasthanika uh, okay yeah see it is the panini all of you know again very you know intellectual who compiled the first grammar of india astadhyayi so panini he is the one who talked about the you know samasthan and uh, basically he talked about the guild as a sreni sreni actually means the guild guild all of you know as we have discussed this is the association of merchant right so that's a correct point of view you know that's a correct so definitely one is uh, you know correct now when we talk about gautam dharma sutra uh, the first clear cut evidence regarding the guild actually comes from the gautam dharma sutra this is a very very important fact that you should know with respect to the guild so again that is also correct right and third uh, the guild began to enjoy more autonomy and power uh, you know in the post maurya like you know we have indo greek sakas kusanas and the satvana that means post maurya compared to the mauryan period 
that, that's a very also logical one, right? See, when we talk about Mauryas, there was a single ruler, you know, all of you know, Mauryas, they were the imperial king. So they ruled all over the India, right? They ruled all over the India and thus you will find out uh, when we talk about Mauryas, they were more powerful. And then what happened in the post Maurya? There is a decentralization of power. We have smaller, smaller king. And as a result, the power of the merchant increase, right? So, you know, Pranjay says A and Manis, uh, you know, have given the B. Let's see what is the answer, right? So, if you look at the guild begin to enjoy more autonomy in the post Maurya than the Mauryan period. Absolutely correct. You know, since there is a decentralization of power in the post Maurya, now we have a smaller kingdom as a consequences. Uh, you know, the power of the guild increase. For example, as all of you know, you know, I, as we say, history repeat itself, right? So, whenever you will find out there is a coalition government, you know, the power of business community increase over the government. And whenever, if there is a government that have a, you know, a, a huge majority, obviously the, you know, the, the control of business class over the government decline, right? So in this way, you can understand the same phenomena here, right? So I hope now the point is clear. So 43, 1, 2 and 3, all three are correct and we need to find out correct and thus the correct answer is D, 1, 2 and 3. I hope now this point is clear to all of you. Uh, unfortunately, Pranjay, well attempt, you try to give the answers. A is not the correct answer, so is the monies. You gave the answers, that's a brave one. You require bravery to write the answers, so you written it. Doesn't matter, you, you know, you are here to correct yourself. I hope now you got the idea, you know. So, you know, that is, that is the purpose of, you know, discussing all those things because you should not make those mistakes in the UPSC and that is why you people are here to discuss those concepts, right? Anyway, question number 44, quickly write down your answers. Question number 44. Now, uh, in the context of ancient history of India, Hatta is what? Again, uh, uh, I can understand uh, this question may be uh, difficult for some of you, but understand uh, there are so many questions that you can solve with your presence of mind. You know, uh, in, uh, see, knowledge is important, but apart from the knowledge, you also require the presence of mind. You know, for example, uh, particularly in the northern India, we use, you know, for example, there is a uh, place called as a hut, uh, or for example, Dili hut. You know, so what is Dili hut? You know, Basically, it's a place where merchant, they will bring their goods and then, you know, the customer, they will come, they will see their goods and they will, you know, purchase their goods, right? So, you will find out the concept of, you know, this heart in Northern India particularly comes from the ancient practice of the hut, right? So, again, what is hut here? You know, it's, it's a, uh, for a, you know, it's a place where the exchange and the mutual transfer of goods and article is going to happen. So artisans, they will bring their goods, the, you know, the people, they will come, they see their goods and then accordingly they are going to purchase their goods. So I hope now this point is clear to all of you. Uh, you could have solved this question, you know, though difficult one, uh, you know, in UPSC you may get such type of the question which you do not know. But if you apply your brain, if you apply those your logic, certainly you can come to the answer. So I hope now this point is clear to all of you, right? So let's move to the next uh, question, 45. 45, quickly give me the answers, 45. Question number 45. Okay, we'll, we'll try to cover it, you know, okay, fine. So, 45, uh, now uh, we have Gupta period, this question is associated with the Gupta period, right? Now, if you look at the uh, question number 45, now look at the uh, statement number 3. 
Gupta bureaucracy was more elaborate as compared to that of the Maurya. No, uh, that's a very known fact. Mauryan bureaucracy was more, uh, you know, extensive and centralized than that of the Gupta, right? So Guptan bureau, uh, Gupta's bureaucracy was obviously not as centralized or extensive as that of the Maurya. And thus, definitely, if you look at the third, third is definitely incorrect. And thus, if you eliminate third, right, you come to know one and two is definitely correct. Just you need to check the statement number four. As compared to Ledic, later Vedic period, again, there's a very important concept. Understand, during the Gupta period, the status of Brahman and the Sudra, you know, improved. Status of Brahman as well as the Sudra improved. And thus, if you look at the statement number four, statement number is four is also correct. And thus, straight away, the 45B, one, two, and four is the correct answers. Any query you can write in the chat box. Question number 45. Let's move to the question number 46. 46 right okay now uh paranjay had given b very good uh Soumya, it is not b uh you know uh, uh vishnu had given d no it's not d well tried but again fine now uh question number 46 46. Uh, so Pranjay had, uh, I, I, you know, Soumya said D and Pranjay had given the B uh, with respect to the question number 46. Quickly, uh, uh, guys, please, uh, if you want to write your answers, please do it as soon as possible so that we can rapid, you know, we can take the process very rapidly, right? So we have to answer. One is given by Soumya and then Pranjay, right? Okay. Now, uh, this question is all about the, you know, Cholas, uh, right? So, the Cholas, they carried out large number of trade, particularly with the Southeast Asia, right? And, uh, yeah, so, uh, Upper Jita is, uh, you know, 46A, fine. Okay, so Cholas, all of, you know, they carried out large number of trade with the Southeast Asia, right? Southeast Asia. Now, if you look at uh, Cholas, they had two capital. First, they had Urayur and then they had their coastal capital that is called as a Kaveri Patnam. So, one of their Patanam basically means port city. The word Patanam actually means the port city. So, you have Kaveri Patnam and then you have, you know, Kaveri Patnam was one of the important port. But more important was Nagapatinam. So, you will find out Cholas, they exported large number of goods from Naga Patinam to the Southeast Asia. So, along with the Kaveri Patinam, Naga Patinam was a very important port through which Cholas carried out huge trade with the Southeast Asia. So, I hope now the point is clear to all of you. Question number 46, Naga Patinam. All good? So, very good, Aparijita. Uh, anyway, uh, all of you tried, you know, quickly give the answers 47. Question number 47. Question number 47. Again, a little bit difficult one. And that is what I can see here, you know, not many people, they are giving the answers. So, okay, Pranay says 47C. Okay, let's look, uh, you know, uh, all of you know this question is associated with the particularly Vijayanagar Empire. Uh, Vijayanagar Empire is a very important part of your syllabus. And now understand this point here. Vijayanagar Empire, you know, in last few years, uh, there is a large number of questions that comes from the, you know, Vijayanagar Empire. So, Vijayanagar Empire, prepare it well. Uh, this is always going to be very, very important, right? Now, when we talk about, uh, you know, particularly Krishna Dev Rai, Vijayanagar Empire, the most prominent king was the Krishna Dev Rai and his empire, as all of you know, was known for the Ast Diggaj, right? And one of the Ast Diggaj was the Alasani Pedanna, right? And you also have Tenali Ramakrishna, right? So, if you look at here, you know, uh, 
तो अल्लासनी पेदन्ना वॉज द वन ऑफ दू नो यू नो वन ऑफ द अष्ट दिग्गज ऑफ द कृष्ण देव राय नो डाउट अबाउट इट बट पांडुरंग महात्म महा मात्यम वॉज एक्चुअली रिटर्न बाय दी तेनाली रामकृष्ण सो ऑब्वियसली देर आर टू फैक्ट्स हेयर एंड यू शुड बी वेरी क्लियर देर इज नो डाउट ही वॉज वन ऑफ द अष्ट दिग्गज बट अगेन when we talk about you know pandurang mahamatyam this book was not written by allasani pedanna but by the tenali ramkrishna right so again uh, if you look at this statement number 1 that is definitely uh, incorrect right and uh, second uh, you know second statement is correct hampi uh, you know hampi if you look at the hampi uh, there is a the city of hampi have a mythology behind it Uh, it is also described in the ramayan uh, ramayan for example in the ramayan this is called as a kingdom of bali bali all of you know you know the person who helped the ram right in his in the battle against the ravan right so you will find out you know in the ramayan hampi was actually described as a kingdom of kingdom of you know vanar that is the monkey right so we you know vanar is associated with the kingdom of bali right so again uh, that is definitely correct right so now if you look at the answer here 47 right 47 right now we have to find out correct right and uh, all of you know uh, one is definitely incorrect so a and c cannot be answers and three is definitely correct as we have discussed and thus b 2 and 3 is the correct answer right uh uh sikhar uh, where i can get the uh, uh, you know key uh, answer key uh, sikhar you can get the answer key through the our website uh, you know is score uh, so you can go there you know you will get there or you can join also our telegram channel uh, you know all the faculties are there in the telegram channel and uh, we resolve all the queries there so you can also get those thing from the telegram anyway so vikram had given the answers b saurabh said c uh, so the correct answer is b and many of you have given the b like you know vikram uh, very good fine okay now question number 48 48 question number 48 uh this question is little bit tricky we have two words komati and clean right so basically you know these are uh, see when we talk about medieval uh medieval india basically you know we have various terminology uh because as all of you know there are many uh, persian community they came from outside like you have words like dadini you have mehjar nama you have ibadat khana you know so if you if you look at the upsc paper uh, in the medieval particularly they ask uh, the various terminology and thus terminology is a very very important one right so we have the answers given by the uh, vikram 48a uh, saurabh says d pranjay says d and uh, you know so uh, now when we talk about understand here so when we talk about uh, you know we here various term like banjara you know multani you know so these are the words which was very popular as a trader in the northern india so in the northern india the trading community they will be called as a banjara multani and there, there are many various words, words right in the south india the merchant they will be called as a chetis right chetis but you will find out you know particularly you know in the in the you know this area they are going to be called as a kling and here they will be called as a komati so cheti would be for the sub you know in the regional area they are going to have diversity on the basis of language right telugu area tamil area so again these are the you know diversities of the word cheti and cheti all of you know means merchant right so cheti we have kling and komati so that is the word here and i hope these are the medieval word that you should acquaint yourself right so 48 uh, 
Komatis and the Kling basically they represent the mercantile community. I hope now that point is clear to all of you. Question number 49, 49 easy one. I expect uh, you know more uh, reply from all of you, right? 49, 49. Uh, this, this is the one you can do it very easily, right? So quickly give me your reply, 49, 49. Pranjay says C and uh, okay. 49, I guess most of you have done this question. You know, we have moderate, we have extremist and all of you know, uh, the difference between the moderate and the extremist is a very, very important part of your syllabus, right? So if you look at the background, the background is taken from the difference from the moderate and the extremist, right? So, uh, you know, we have to, we have got the 2C. So let's quickly, uh, right. Now, when we talk about uh, what we need to find out, correct, right? Both moderate and the, uh, you know, extremist, according to the statement, they believed in the masses were ready for participation of political work. So, uh, you know, again, this is a very, very easy concept as all of you know. There was a difference of opinion between the moderate and the extremist in the sense moderate, uh, they, they, they were not ready for the participation of the masses. On the other hand, uh, extremist leader like Tilak and others, they wanted the participation of the people into the national movement. And thus, what do you have to understand here? No, uh, conceptually this is not correct. While moderate, they believe, uh, you know, not in the participation of the masses, the extremists did believe it, right? So one is definitely incorrect. Thus, A and D cannot be your answers. Now all of you know, three is definitely correct. Let's look at the two. Both believed in the political connection with the Britain. No. So there's a very important theory called as a providential mission theory. You know, we cover in the class, you know, providential mission theory. This is a very, very important ideology on the basis of which moderate rule existed in India. See, what is providential mission theory? According to moderate, if British they remain in India, it will lead to the creation of modern India. So their stay in India is in the interest of India. And thus, they believe that, you know, Britishers, if they remain in India, it is in the inter interest of India. But extremists, they deny the providential mission theory. Extremists did not believe, you know, and thus, extremists never wanted the connection between the India and the Britain. Right? So again, uh, on the basis of that, all of you know, the two is definitely incorrect and thus C is the correct answers, right? So we have just two answers very surprisingly, you know, uh, uh, again, this uh, question, I hope, you know, conceptual one, right? This is, this is a conceptual one, right? So I hope all of you have performed well, right? Question number 50, question number 50. Quickly write down your answers and uh, nowadays we see such type of you know framework where some important statement will be given to you and uh, you will be asked to identify you know what is that right and uh, you know this is also one of the you know skills that nowadays you need to acquire to you know solve certain questions right so 50 50 uh, uh, Vikram says B, fine. So is it partisan? Is it the individual Satyagraha? Is it the constituent assembly or Pune Pact? So we have one answers right now. Okay, fine. Let's discuss this. This is uh, this discussion was with respect to the constituent assembly. This discussion was with respect to the constituent assembly. Now understand. In the Congress, the idea of constituent assembly was given by the Jawaharlal Nehru. So the idea was actually presented by the Jawaharlal Nehru and initially Mahatma Gandhi was against the idea of constituent assembly. Mahatma Gandhi was not very much convinced with the idea of constituent assembly, but later on Mahatma Gandhi realized 
that the constituent assembly where people from all community you know all community including the muslims they will be you know represented and this in this way it can resolve the various grievances among the indians including the communal grievances and thus mahatma gandhi later believed that you know the constituent assembly had a potential to resolve the grievances of indian and uh, you know if you look at the line here now that will make a sense to you right gandhi here confessed that hard fact have made me a convert you know initially he was not believed in the constituent assembly and for that reason more enthusiastic than nehru initially it was the idea of nehru but later on mahatma gandhi became more convinced about the constituent assembly for i seem to see in 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 it a remedy remedy you know solve the problem of you know uh, indians right with jawahar lal mean not for our communal and other problem beside being a vehicle for mass political and other education so again this this entire statement is all about the constituent assembly so i hope now that that is clear to all of you okay uh then we have saurabh uh, what do you mean by that smiley so we had a uh, you know a uh, b the answer b is, uh, is uh, unfortunately if i recall the b is b was not the correct answers right uh, it is this c and uh, fine uh, okay let's move on then we have question number uh, question next question is question number 80 quickly move to the question number 80 and give me the answers question number 80 okay so now again if you look at the question number 80 here again your presence of my mind do matter here let me tell you the preliminary is not just an examination of your knowledge is it is also the test of your skills as well as your personality that is always going to matter here and thus the presence of mind do matter here for example if you look at the you know uh, the calcutta session of the indian national congress fine 1906 the flag of swaraj for india was now why gk gokhale you know why gk gokhale why gk gokhale see when the president was dada bhai nauroji obviously the flag is going to be unfurled by the dada bhai nauroji you know so again you know this kind of presence of mind will help you a lot in the upsc you could easily you know eliminate for example you need to find out correct here right and you come to know 3 is definitely correct and right right 3 is correct right and what you just need to understand here right 2 you have to just look to the 2 tilak was the first indian to be tried under the law of sedition uh no tilak was not the first uh you know uh, there is a journalist called as a jc bose there was a journalist called as a jc bose J.C. Bose was the first journalist to be imprisoned on the charges of the sedition. The you know what Tilak and Mahatma Gandhi was known for. Tilak and Mahatma Gandhi was you know jailed many times, many times. You know they spended you know almost half of their life in the jail. Both Tilak and Mahatma Gandhi, right? And that is why you have to understand here. Tilak obviously you know. one of the greatest you know son of mother india no doubt about it but again you know he was not the first indian so again two is also incorrect and thus all of you know the 80 d is the correct answer right and all of you know 1906 calcutta session we have four resolution three is already given here right question number 
सो वी हैड दी आंसर्स यू नो विक्रम दे गिव दी करेक्ट आंसर प्रंजय नो इट्स नॉट बी सौरभ यस इट्स डी एन एल बी सुबह रेडी यस इट्स इट वॉज डी एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट राइट क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी वन क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी वन uh this is a little bit tip you know difficult uh you know question uh it's it's you know some of the question in the upsc they comes factual in nature and they are information based like you can see last year as well so this question is the information base here right and uh, uh when we talk about you know this question uh, the, again it's a, it's a you know there's a very prominent uh, you know telugu poet and uh, you know his name was the gauri mela satya narayan so the answer for the 81 is the b and again i repeat it's you know some question in the history or uh, upsc they are based on the you know uh, uh, information right so maybe because of current affairs and many other things right so i hope now you got the background to 81 let's move to the question number 82 82 again very important one 82 quickly give your answers question number 82 82 okay this question is associated with the various uh, tribal and the peasant revolt which happened during the you know rule of the british government right so all of you know during the reign of british government there happened large number of the revolt okay so again your presence of mind here matter a lot for example uh, sanyasi uprising fine uh, you know is it happen in madras is it happen in madras you know very important question right so obviously your presence of mind matter it you know it happen in bengal not in madras right so definitely one is you know one is incorrect right and you know incorrect should be part of your answers right so b and c cannot be your answers right that means to say third is definitely you know correct anyway let's move to the the major reason for behind the santhal revolt was that they were forced to pay back uh, with a heavy interest during the harvest time see santhal revolt happened because of the problem of the outsider or we can say money lender money lenders all of you know they gave the loan and then you know the uh, the the tribal people they had to pay you know huge amount and you know uh, so they were forced to pay the interest you know uh, during the harvest time so again that became the reason and thus it is correct and what we need to find out we need to find out incorrect right so uh we know that d is the correct answer 82 d is the correct answer i hope now this point is clear to all of you so 82 82 uh d is the correct answer uh vikram what do you mean by 80a okay uh, so let's move to the question number 83 question number 83 okay quickly move to the question number 83 uh, again this question is associated with the uh, now if we look at here see uh, sambar lake obviously this this is going to talk about you know uh, rajasthan and all of you know this is somewhere down the line uh, this is going to talk about you know uh, we have you know prithviraj raso prithviraj right so prithviraj raso all of you know is written by chand bardai so there are two poet of prithviraj one is chand bardai and there is a jainak jainak and jainak wrote the you know prithviraj vijay so if you look at you know this, this two book prithviraj raso of chand bardai and vijay you know prithviraj vijay Uh, talks about the various glory of the you know uh, various glory of the uh, you know prithviraj uh, now when we talk about prithviraj vijay you know prithviraj vijay 
uh, this book you know talk about the sambar lake uh, you know this book give the mythological uh, story behind the sambar lake uh, and the story is like you know the the god had gifted the sambar lake to the you know vasudev and then uh, you know, in through this 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 sambar lake came into the existence right so in this way prithviraj vijay actually highlight the uh, you know so i hope now all of you got the answers 83 d right so yeah vikram absolutely uh, you know yeah okay fine 82 vikram fine 83 vikram absolutely correct uh, pranjay absolutely correct it's prithviraj uh, you know vijay so that's it from my side right so again uh, best wishes to all of you from uh, you know gss score uh, you know in last days what to do just try to improve and just try to revise just try to learn certain techniques so that you do not commit those mistake in the class and that is what the purpose of this discussion is all about so that's all from my side next the eminent faculty of geography will take over thank you देखिए का आवाज प्रॉपर आ रही है गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई होप मेरी आवाज आप लोगों तक पहुंच रही होगी और ज्योग्राफी uh, का क्वेश्चन पेपर रिलेटिवली uh, इजी लगा होगा इस बार का uh, थोड़ा सा फैक्चुअल साइट पर है uh, थोड़े से क्वेश्चंस ऐसे हैं कि अगर आपने uh, पढ़े होंगे तो मेरे ख्याल से थोड़ा सा फैक्चुअल साइट पर ये आपको क्वेश्चंस जो होंगे वो आपको दिखाई देंगे बट ये रिलेटिवली इजी है मैं जहाँ तक समझता हूँ कि अगर थोड़ा बहुत भी अगर हम ज्योग्राफी को थोड़ा बहुत भी अगर हमने इवन एन बेसिस भी पढ़ा है तो भी हम काफ़ी सारे क्वेश्चंस ऐसे होंगे जिनको हम अटेम्प्ट कर सकते हैं ओके जिनको हम अटैम्प्ट कर सकते हैं और जहां तक ज्योग्राफी की प्रिपरेशन की बात है मैं मैं आपके सा, आपके सामने आज पहली बार नहीं आया हूं मेरा नाम सिद्धार्थ मित्तल है एंड आई एम टेकिंग योर आई एम टेकिंग दिस ज्योग्राफी ऑप्शनल एंड 
classes for the geography uh, GS also uh, in this uh, uh, institute GS score and you know that this is our third test or uh, uh, every in every test we are having this discussion program and uh, um, many many students are um, having uh, lots and lots of benefit from this discussion program. Now we are also having our uh, uh, link we are also having our telegram links uh, in the description box of this uh, live video. So those who are interested to join our uh, 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 telegram channel for uh, various purpose uh, you can you can just uh, go through that description box and just join our telegram channel. Okay, so uh, the very first question, uh, um, uh, the very first question that we have uh, in the name of uh, for this geography, uh, if you can see this one, uh, this is your 31st number question. Okay, uh, we are having around 13, 14 questions from geography. So this is your uh, 31st question and this is going to be a very simple one uh, because if you are aware about the complete geological uh, time scale, if you are aware about the geological time scale, then you can attempt this question. Okay, so you know that uh, eras and then we have uh, eon, eons are divided into era and eras are divided into period. Now the question is uh, sometimes uh, the student may misunderstand this question, which of the following correctly denotes the current geological time on the earth. Means what, what is the present geological time? The question is about present geological time. Okay, so we are talking about in terms of present uh, geological time. And uh, if we are aware about the present geological time, then we can uh, we can easily answer this question. So you may be aware about the eon, the eon that we have. So eon, the first one uh, is related to the eon. So it is going to be a phanerozoic eon. So Precambrian and Proterozoic eon will not be the. Um, you can easily eliminate the option A and D. You can easily eliminate the option A and D. So you have a choice only left between. Um, between the A and the B and between the B and C also Mesozoic uh, is comes in a middle and Cenozoic comes after the Mesozoic. So your answer choice comes out to be option C. If you have gone through this uh, geological time scale, okay. So if you have gone through this geological time scale, then uh, you can uh, look to the answer of this question and uh, the answer for this question, okay, because if you uh, look to the, because the eon that, that we are having. Uh, that is uh, uh, that is the phanerozoic eon that we have and uh, the first major era that we have in the context of our phanerozoic eon is paleozoic and uh, cambrian is the first uh, period of the paleozoic era you may be aware about this one so mesozoic era so uh, the era that will that we will come here is a cenozoic era that is going to be a seno not the mesozoic it is going to be a cenozoic era so option 31 C, the answer for this uh, first question is going to be, uh, uh, 31st number question is going to be uh, option 31st C, okay. So this is going to be your answer for this question. Now come to the next question, okay. I do not think Pranay, uh, Pranay Nigam and Vikram Singh, uh, uh, 31 B uh, means uh, uh, Mesozoic era. Uh, uh, and we currently live because Cenozoic starts around 65 million years ago. So how you have reached to this Mesozoic era? I do not know how do you have reached to this Mesozoic era uh, because the Cenozoic starts around 65 million years ago. Okay. Uh, Prananjay and Vikram, just please correct your answer. Okay. So answer choice is going to be 31 option C. Okay. Th uh, 31 option C is going to be the answer. Now look to the next question. The next question that we have is 32 number. Consider the following statement regarding the types of the magma. Felsic magma has the highest silica content of all the magma types. Okay. Highest silica content. Yes, you can say uh, the felsic magma is having a highest silica content. Right? Uh, why? The, because it, uh, because the felsic is simply means that it is having on a higher side. So when we have uh, uh, the magma, when we have a magma which is which consists of good silica percentage, so felsic is generally defined in terms of a, in terms of a magma which is having a good percentage of a silica. So this is a very obvious. Uh, uh, this is very obvious. This is the right one. Viscosity of the magma is the only factor. No. Now the question here is only factor. You cannot say that the viscosity will uh, only determines the uh, explosiveness of the volcano. Uh, the presence of the water 
or the passage the smooth passage means if if there is any obstruction in the passage of the magma okay then uh, that ex then obstruction sometimes blocks the magma but when the pressure is built up the pressure bahut zyada build up ho jata hai then it comes in an explosive form so you cannot say that uh, viscosity is the only factor which will determine uh, viscosity is the only factor which will determine the uh, explosive intensity of the volcano no we have a water vapor the passage uh, the, the the clearness of the passage also other are the factors which will determines uh, the explosive intensity of the volcano so this one is right and therefore which of the following statement is or are correct so option a is going to be your answer in this case okay now come to the 34 number question now i would like to eliminate this 34 number question uh, sorry uh, we will we'll first look to this 33 number question so the 33 number question if you look to this 33 number question okay so uh, we have uh, in this 33 i remember in this 33 number question यहां से ओके सो सो लाउ लुक टू दिस वन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट क्रायो फैक्चरिंग इज अ मैकेनिकल वेदरिंग क्रायो फैक्चरिंग क्रायो वर्ड से ही आपको क्लियर हो जाता है नाउ इफ यू इफ यू नो दैट द वर्ड क्रायो इट सेल्फ मेक इट वेरी क्लियर समथिंग रिलेटेड टू द वेरी कोल्ड सिचुएशन or very uh, very less temperature very cold situation cryo fracturing so you can you can call this cryo fracturing as to be as a frost weathering now in a higher altitude regions or the regions of higher latitude also you know that the uh, freezing and the thawing cycle is mainly responsible for the weathering of the rocks okay freezing and the thawing cycle so 33 number question cryo fracturing is the mechanical weathering process in which water its liquid and solid form is primarily responsible for the weathering of the rocks so that seems to be uh, that seems to be a uh, uh, correct one there is no problem in this one spheroidal weathering now spheroidal weathering is sometimes also called to be as a onion peeling we also call it to be as a onion peeling type of the weathering is the form of a chemical weathering that occurs when a rectangular block is weathered from the three sides at the corners from the two sides of its edges okay so that also seems to be the correct one so uh, this this the question here is which of the following is an above are correct so that that comes to be a correct one so option both 1 and 2 is going to be the correct one now come to the question number we will come to the question number 34 and the question number 34 is bit uh, means i would like to eliminate this question number 34 because the framing of this question is not right okay so uh, main isko question ko eliminate karunga just eliminate this 34 number question because the terrigenous deposit lithogenous in the origin yes that seems to be okay but for the neritic deposit derived from algae in the form of the ooze okay that seems to be wrong and pelagic deposits calcareous and siliceous deposits of skeletons of varine marine and animals okay so that seems to be a right one there is no problem in that that seems to be pelagic deep ocean deposits okay that seems to be a right one but we do not have we we have not framed this question properly so there is a, some framing issue so i would like to eliminate this 34 number question so don't count this 34 number question in your total uh, calculation so i will also recommend them that just to just to eliminate this 32 34 number question okay because the framing of the question is not perfect now come to the next question that we have uh the next question which of the following pairs are correctly made so we this is the 34 number question and 35 number question consider the following statement the saltiest location in the oceans are the regions where evaporation is highest or in the enclosed seas now do you agree with this one do you agree with this uh, question number uh, that we have 36 number question okay so that seems to be uh, i don't think that there is any problem with the first statement because we generally uh, look to this situation means whenever we are looking to the distribution of the salinity then we have a variation in the salinity in terms of uh, how much is the evaporation taking place and uh, and in in the enclosed sea so this statement uh, i don't think that there is any problem with this statement It's the saltiest location in the oceans are the regions where evaporations are highest uh, or in the enclosed sea do you agree with this one uh, i don't think that there is no uh, there is any point of contradiction here with between you and me 
me uh, because this is going to be the right one the salinity of the bay of bengal is less than as compared to the arabian sea due to the influx of the fresh water yes we have a more uh, river draining into the bay of bengal in comparison to the arabian sea so therefore the influx of the fresh water is likely to reduce the salinity of the uh, bay of bengal so this is also right so your question is which of the above is or are correct both one and two both one and two is your answer choice in this question okay is it clear is it clear okay but it all depends upon uh, pranam joy uh, is not only about the enclosed seas uh, we they are the inland seas actually we are talking about the enclosed seas so they are the inland seas okay caspian seas and the black seas okay so it also depends upon the evaporation taking place and it also depends upon that how many rivers are draining into this region so generally uh, means uh, means uh, generally you will find that uh, the uh, many factors actually determine and thus uh, means where evaporation is the highest or or in the enclosed sea so if wherever we have a highest evaporation or the regions are or the regions are enclosed okay so these these are the two factors then only either of the two factors will match and which will ultimately determine the uh, salty nature or the salinity of the ocean okay now come to the next question come to the next question uh, which of the following statement is or are correct regarding the troposphere okay it is the wettest layer of the atmosphere do you agree do you agree with this one it is the wettest layer of the atmosphere yes it is a wettest layer of the atmosphere because most of our water vapor or nearly 100% or uh, nearly 100% of our water vapor lies into the troposphere so this is in the question is which of the following is incorrect remember this one the question is which of the following is incorrect the height of the top of the troposphere is lower in the winter and higher in the summer that is also okay okay when we look to the tropopause then we can see that the tropopause having a uh, tropopause is having a seasonal variation we know this one there is a seasonal variations in terms of a tropopause or in the height of the tropopause and also we know that the um, height of the tropopause uh, varies as per the latitude also with the maximum height at the equatorial region and then declining towards the polar region so the height of the this is also correct there is no problem the upper part of the troposphere is called frictional layer now frictional layer is generally one and half kilometer and sometimes it may go up to uh, two kilometer where where the rotating earth is having the influence because uh, we have a, a fluid uh, we have a gases which is surrounding the earth and uh, and inside these gases we have a rotating earth so because of the rotation of the earth there is a friction which is taking place between the earth and the surrounding atmosphere so the effect of the friction generally do not go beyond one and a half kilometer or two kilometer or at the max it can go up to three kilometer so that layer is called to be as a planetary boundary layer also that is also called to be as a planetary boundary layer and sometimes you also call it to be as a frictional layer so it the upper part of the troposphere is called frictional layer no the upper part is free from the friction so that is why in the upper part of the troposphere we have more geostrophic flow if you can, if you know about the geostrophic flow then uh, you may be aware about this one that the upper part of the uh, atmosphere is actually a geostrophic flow okay so upper troposphere so frictional layer so this is wrong uh, incorrect in general air pressure and the density of the air decreases with the altitude this is right there is no problem with this one so your answer choice in this case is going to be because the question demand of the question is incorrect so you need to choose the incorrect statement so the incorrect statement is option c okay okay rajdeep your aapne bilkul sahi jawab diya hai ki c jo hoga wo that is going to be the incorrect now this is uh, we call it to be as a uh, meridional circulation you may be aware about two types of the circulation that we study okay we call it to be as a general atmospheric circulation or tricellular model of circulation you may be aware about tricellular model okay tricellular model tricellular model of uh, atmospheric circulation mere khayal se aap logo ne padha hoga tricellular model of atmospheric circulation which involves uh, three cells headless cells feller feral cell and pleural cell this is a tricellular model of atmospheric circulation and this tricellular model is actually meridional uh, it is actually meridional along with the meridional we tend to study about the zonal circulation also 
okay zonal circulation also and in this category of the zonal circulation we includes the rossby waves you may have heard about the name of these rossby waves okay and these rossby waves are uh, very much responsible uh, very much responsible in terms of steering the um, uh, low pressure areas uh, from the west to the east you may be aware about that that is also connected with the presence of a uh, polar uh, fronts okay with the uh, with the uh, presence of the polar fronts and with the uh, uh, with the steep pressure gradients and also the uh, zonal flow of the air okay so we have two types of uh, generally we take in terms of atmospheric circulation we take uh, uh, meridional circulation and we take a zonal circulation so this headless cell feral cell and polar cell are actually connected with the meridional circulation meridian along the meridian which is where we have a movement so headless cell winds blow towards the equator at the surface do you agree with this one this is right there is no problem at the surface wind blows towards the equator at the surface there is no problem the largest cells extends from the equator okay the largest cell extends from the equator i don't think that this is going to be the largest cell feral cell feral cell is not the largest cell okay in fact the headless cell is considered to be as a largest one okay and then uh, means extend from the equator no uh, it do not extends from the equator it, it starts from a subtropical high pressure belt you know that it is the start from the subtropical so this is wrong and polar cell air flows out uh, the lower latitude at the surface out towards the lower latitude at the surface that is okay there is no problem from the poles to the lower latitude uh, the air is flowing at the surface so this is right there is no problem with this one so headless cell is okay and polar cell is okay so which of the above above pairs are correctly matched so option c is going to be your right answer choice okay option c is going to be your right answer choice yes uh, uh, question number 36 ke andar mein beta kya problem hai aap mujhe bata sakte hain question number uh, uh, pranjay uh, okay yes air pressure and density decreases uh, with altitude generally okay there is a general decline vikram there is a general decline uh, in terms of an air pressure and also in general the word is in general in general air pressure and density of the air decreases uh, with the altitude okay yeah uh, uh, question 20, 36 is in front of me uh, if any doubt you just tell me because the question is incorrect the demand of the question is about incorrect so it is the wettest layer of, of the atmosphere why it is a wettest layer of the atmosphere it is a wettest layer just because it consists of uh, nearly 100 percent part of our water vapor so that is why it is a wettest layer do you agree do you agree guys so with this statement with the question number 36 there is no problem okay this is correct there is no problem with this one demand of the question is incorrect you need to find out the incorrect one okay is it clear so the height of the the height of the top of the troposphere is lower in the winter and higher in the summer this is also okay the uh, lower in the winter the upper part of the troposphere is called frictional layer no the frictional layer is not there friction layer is near to the surface okay is it clear friction layer is near to the surface so this is wrong in general air pressure and the density of the air decreases with altitude yes this is right there is no problem with this one so your answer choice is going to be option c in this case your answer is going to be option c Samarth, yes, Samarth, any doubt? Prananjay, okay. So I hope uh, this question is right. There is no problem with this one. And uh, this, this we have already done. So feral cell is wrong. So answer choice in this question is going to be option C in the case of a 37 number. Okay. In the case of a 37 number, the answer choice is going to be option C. We have just discussed. Now we will move towards the next question and the next question is about the Rossby waves. Okay, Rossby waves. It helps in maintaining the heat balance of the earth by transferring winds between the tropics and the poles. Do you agree? It helps in maintaining the heat balance. Okay, uh, uh, transferring winds between the tropics and the poles. Yes, there is no problem because they also serve as an important medium of heat transfer. Rossby waves. Okay, between the tropics and the poles. Okay. 
transferring of the heat between the tropics and the poles because because of the meandering nature of the Rossby waves. Okay, we have a movement of the uh, warm tropical air towards the higher latitude and also the movement of a cold polar air towards the lower latitude. So, this is right, there is no problem in this one, okay, there is no problem in this one, there is no problem, this is okay. It helps in the tracking of the surface low pressure system, that is okay, because the uh, Rossby waves then they are encircling the globe, they are the long waves, they are sometimes also called to be as a long waves, okay. And these waves are the reasons, these waves help us to locate the surface positions, uh, means uh, uh, surface positions jo hoti hai, unke cyclones ko surface, their low pressure systems ko locate karne ke liye. Now, as they are created due to the temperature difference between the equator and the poles, they are exclusively formed on the earth, okay. They are exclusively formed on the earth. No, uh, there are many other planets also, even on the Jupiter also, we can observe such uh, uh, such type of a looping patterns. So, that looping pattern is not exclusive to the earth, uh, that could be on the other planets also. So, this is wrong. So, uh, your answer choice is going to be, in this case, your answer choice is going to be option 1 and 2. Okay. Now, next question that we have is consider the following statement regarding the Indian Ocean Dipole. I hope uh, in the context of a monsoon, you may have studied about the Indian Ocean Dipole. आप लोगों ने पढ़ा होगा इंडियन ओशन डाइपोल के बारे में इंडियन ओशन डाइपोल इज अ इज अ सीजनल और अ सी सॉ पैटर्न सी सॉ पैटर्न इन द इक्वेटोरियल इंडियन ओशन ओके और द ऑसिलेशंस दैट वी ऑब्जर्वड इनटू द इक्वेटोरियल इंडियन ओशन वी हैव अ पॉजिटिव इंडियन ओशन डाइपोल व्हेन व्हेन द वेस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ द इक्वेटोरियल इंडियन ओशन इज रिलेटिवली वार्मर देन द इज रिलेटिवली वार्मर देन द ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ द uh, equatorial Indian Ocean, okay, and then on the opposite side we have a negative IOD, and generally it is uh, it is observed uh, on a long period of uh, in a long period of studies it has observed it, it it was observed that there is a very positive correlation uh, between a positive IOD and a Indian monsoon. The mechanism which the which it is playing or the underlying mechanism is still in the mystery. But we have find a very positive correlations between the positive IOD and the and the Indian monsoon. Okay, so uh, positive IOD is good for the Indian monsoon as more evaporation occurs in a warm water. Okay, uh, pressure is inversely proportional to the uh, pressure is inversely proportional to the temperature. Chetna Saxena that you can you can uh, uh, you can uh, say this one okay but uh, tell me one thing uh, that if the uh, tell me one thing that uh, if the temperature uh, means uh, here the atmospheric pressure is very much dependent upon uh, the uh, presence of gases or the density of the gases okay so as you go higher up into the atmosphere the density of the gases also reduces and the number of the molecules also get reduces. You know that you may be aware about this fact that after crossing uh, 10 or 15 kilometers to a height, uh, nearly you cover around 50 percent part of your atmosphere. Okay. Now try to understand this concept because Chetna has raised a concept here about the pressure. Now suppose Chetna, you are uh, just listen to this question about the change in the pressure. Uh, this is the point A and this is a point B, and we have an air column here. We have an air column. Now, suppose the person is standing here, you can call it to be as a pressure A and the person is, another person is standing here, you call it to be as a pressure B and you just look to the another one, pressure C, okay, pressure C. Now, can you tell me where you are going to experience the maximum pressure? Atmospheric pressure, I am talking about the atmospheric pressure, Chetna Saxena, I am talking about the atmospheric pressure, the, you are doing a very fundamental mistake out here. Okay, in making this that your your uh, explanation seems to be uh, okay in the case when you do when you take a pressure in a very different context. Okay, obviously there is an effect of uh, temperature on the pressure uh, with the decrease in the pressure with the decrease in the temperature it is likely that the pressure may get increased. Okay, and with the increase in the pressure in increase in the temperature it is likely that the surface pressure may start getting reduced. Okay, but we are talking about the entire extent of the troposphere. We are talking in terms of the entire extent of the troposphere. Now, you tell me the person at A will experience the pressure of the entire column. 
what is the formula for pressure pressure equals to force per unit area this is what a formula of pressure now the force is exerted by the weight of the entire column here the here the pressure will be felt only by the column which is above it and here the pressure will be felt only by the column above it now tell me where you are going to have the maximum pressure here at a b or c where you are going to experience the maximum pressure chetna saksana where you are going to experience the maximum pressure at a b or c It's quite obvious that the A at the position A, you are going to experience the maximum pressure. Okay, yes. Uh, at the A, you are going to experience the maximum pressure and it will start decreasing as you move uh, uh, above the or you, as you take, uh, you, you start moving into the atmosphere or you start uh, taking a height into the atmosphere. Why so? Because the, the weight of the column will start getting reduced because the density of the gases also start getting reduced. You got this point? Now the temperature reduces, the temperature reduces, why the temperature reduces into in our atmosphere? Because our atmosphere is heated from below. So as or the source of the heat for our atmosphere is the earth's surface. Okay. So, as you move away from the earth's surface, you will start experiencing a less heat. Okay? This is a general, general explanation. There are many technicalities also associated with it. But in general, you can understand this point as that our atmosphere is heated from below. So, as you move away from the surface of the earth, you will start experiencing a less heat. Okay, and it is due to this reason you go to the mountainous re, uh, you go to the mountainous places. You experience a less temperature in comparison to any plain areas. Suppose you are in Delhi and you are moving towards Masuri or Kedarnath. You are going for religious trip. Then, in the regions of the Kedarnath, the temperature is going to be less, and in the regions of the Delhi, the temperature is going to be high, because the Delhi may be at a at a uh, sea level. Uh, there the sea level position of the Delhi may be around 200 meter or 250 meter and the Kedarnath position will be around uh, will be around 4000 uh, meter above the earth's surface okay uh, from the sea level. So you know that for a 1 kilometer there is a decrease of around 6.5 degrees centigrade. So it is likely that uh, when you scale a height of around 4 kilometer it is likely that there will be a decrease of around 30 degrees centigrade uh, from the sea level. This point is clear. So, Chetna, the, you uh, uh, it, it still, if it is uh, not, means if it's still, if you, are, if you are not able to understand uh, the explanation, so try to get connected on our Telegram group. So, and just get in touch with me. I'll, I'll uh, make this concept correct for you. Okay. So, uh, now, now the next question is. Now, the next one is that we have uh, is uh, the question number positive IOD we were discussing. So, positive IOD is good for Indian monsoon and more evaporation occurs in a warm water. Yes, they said, okay, there is no problem with this one. This is okay. There is no problem. Uh, we can take uh, we can take this one. There is no problem in, in, in this uh, in this statement. This is right. In the positive IOD, Arabian Sea becomes much warmer than the Bay of Bengal. This is also right. Those who have studied about the Indian Ocean Dipole, they may be aware about it. So, both 1 and 2 is the right uh, statement. Both 1 and 2 are the correct statement. Now, come to the question number 40. Uh, which of the following statement is or are correct? The southern slopes of the Himalayas have a steep gradient and the northern slopes have comparatively gentle gradient. You know, you this is a very, very, uh, very established facts about the Himalayas that the southern slopes are steeper uh, in comparison to the northern slope. Agar kabhi aap Vaishnav Devi jayenge, to Vaishnav Devi agar aap jate hain, to ek taraf se agar aap, madalab Vaishnav Devi jab aap uh, scale kar rote hain, or reaching towards the temple, to aap dekhte hain ki, uske do raste hain jane ke, ek to northern slope hai, aur ek southern slope hai. Agar aap southern slope wala route le lete hain, to aapko kaafi thakaan hoti hai, aur agar aap northern slope wala route le lete hain, to aapko relatively kam uh, feel, feel hota hai. Okay, so it is just because uh, the northern slopes and the southern slopes are having a different gradient, and the southern slopes in the case of the Himalayas are relatively steeper. It is it is steeper in comparison to the northern slope. Now, uh, in the eastern region, uh, so shivaliks are comparatively absent in the eastern region. 
so uh, shivaliks are present in the eastern region even into the himalayas even into the arunachal pradesh also we name them as uh, mishmi miri abor so these are the names which are given to the shivalik himalayas uh, shivaliks are present but sometimes what happen it is very difficult to differentiate between the shivalik and the middle himalayas because all the ranges come very close to each other as you move to the eastern side okay all the ranges come because you uh, if you if you are on a western side of the himalayas in the regions of uttarakhand or in the regions of uh, himachal pradesh or in the regions of jammu and kashmir so there is a continuous there is a uh, okay so there is a continuous uh, uh, change in the height means there is a gradual change in the uh, height of the himalayas because the shivalik then you have middle himalayas and then you have a great himalayas if you are on a western side but as you move towards the eastern side they start converging and the shivalik and the middle himalayas they come very close to each other they come close to each other so it does not mean that they are not present they are present out there so we have uh, this one so shivaliks are completely absent on the east and beyond the tishta so this is a wrong statement this is a wrong one and the southern slopes of the himalayas have a steeper this is the right one and the core of the himadri ranges himachals that is obviously we have an arkin rocks arkin rocks are there because they are the basement rocks and um, the himadri ranges uh, are generally consisting of such basement rocks or you can they you can say that the folding of the basement rocks so they consist of uh, arkin rocks so there is no problem with this one and your answer choice in this case uh, uh, the answer choice in this case is first and the third and your answer choice is going to be option b so using the code block correct answer using the code block you need to find out which one is correct so your answer choice is going to be option b in this case okay now come to the uh, question that we have uh, uh, we have a question now uh, we will go to the question number uh, 76 we will look to the question number 76 uh, come to the question number 76 and uh, we have a question related to the rivers uh, of uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir region and uh, the question is uh, 76 just a minute uh, let me bring it in front of for you so so 76 uh, we have uh, 76 so just a minute okay so the question is consider the following statement bias is the only river of panchanad river system which flows entirely in the india do you agree with this one this is right there is no problem with this one so bias is the only river okay because many other rivers uh, many all the other rivers uh, like satlaj comes from outside the india and uh, bias tend to originate in the india and meets in the india also so the, this is right there is no problem satlas is the longest uh, tributary of the indus river okay that is also okay there is no problem and both jhelum and ravi are the direct tributaries of chenab yes they both meet with the chenab so there is no problem with this one so this is also right this is a very factual type of the question if you are aware about the rivers then you can answer this question quite easily so option d is going to be your answer choice in this question okay so there is no need of having any further discussion because this is this is a simple uh, question okay now come to the 77 number question which of the following are the characteristics of mediterranean climate you may have studied about the mediterranean climate shifting of the westerlies towards the pole in the summer okay do you agree with this one shifting of the westerlies towards the pole okay that is okay there is no problem because there is a shift of the winds with the change in the uh, position of the sun or apparent position of the sun so there is no problem this is right there is no issue in this one okay so we can take this one this is okay found on the eastern margins of the continent no it is not found on the eastern margins of the continent uh, you you are likely to find them on the western margins of the continent so there is no chance of having it on the eastern margins they will be always on the western margin so this is wrong not the eastern margin they are the western margins okay so presence of both cold and hot local winds yes uh, we have a relatively presence of uh, cold and hot local winds there is no problem because there are so many local winds originating from the sahara uh, moving crossing towards the mediterranean sea and many many winds also coming from the alps so they, this region is very prominent in terms of the cold and the hot local winds and it is due to this presence of cold cold and hot local winds uh, the mediterranean region is also a breeding ground of extra tropical cyclone you may be aware about this one breeding ground of ex extra tropical cyclones okay so it is just because of the contrasting winds uh, cold and hot 
so this is right there is no problem cattle rearing is very important cattle rearing is less important rather orchard farming or citrus fruits and that type of the things because the grass which is uh, available there is not of good quality so this is not okay so this is wrong so your answer choice is first and third and your option is going to be your answer choice is going to be option c okay now come to the next question okay come to the next question g i u k gap one of the cold war strategic transit route g ka matlab kya hai greenland uh, with the uh, with this g we know that uh, it is greenland and then we have a iceland then we have a uk so that comes in the reasons a gap and which is now uh, considered to be as a maritime choke point uh, is located in which of the following oceans so it's very easy antarctic to nahi ho sakta uh, atlantic uh, atlantic ka hai ya arctic ka hai kiska hai आप लोगों ने क्या आंसर मार्क करा है इसका ओके सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी इन अ नॉर्दर्न एटलांटिक रीजन सो ऑप्शन बी इज गोइंग टू बी द आंसर नियर द आइसलैंड नाउ अनदर वन लिथियम ट्राइंगल द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द लिथियम ट्राइंगल सो लिथियम ट्राइंगल क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटिवली इजी लिथियम ट्राइंगल द पार्ट ऑफ द द रीजन ऑफ द साउथ अमेरिका and uh, you may be uh, you may be aware about the countries which are included in those regions of a lithium triangle because they are the reasons where you have a maximum uh, lithium reserves okay so lithium triangle uh, that is a part of south america and uh, it is actually including uh, argentina bolivia bolivia and chile okay and uh, we also call them to be as a home of one of the largest lithium reserves in the world and uh, it has now because lithium is now developing to be as a very important and a strategic uh, metal because uh, because for this electric mobility and uh, replacement of uh, fossil fuel so this particular reason uh, is uh, coming out to be as a very important geopolitical reason okay so uh, but but you will find that they are one of the driest places of the world okay uh argentina bolivia and chile because all this lithium is generally observed into the driest places on the earth so even though uh, they they have a good reserves but they are the driest uh, places on earth okay and uh, and for this the lithium extraction generally take place they uh, drill a hole because generally the lithium is observed into a salt flats or the reasons which were earlier a brine water reason okay so uh, so mineral rich brine uh, reasons are there so uh, that is generally and the lithium is extracted from that okay so it is an alkali metal you may be aware about it so argentina bolivia and chile so your answer choice is going to be option a in this case okay so option a is going to be your answer choice okay so if anyone kuch logo ko agar doubts hote hain if any questions ya kuch bhi hai to aap hamare telegram channel se connect ho sakte hain and uh, we are also having our uh, geography optional classes going on so those who are planning to choose a geography optional they can also come in contact with us and we are having uh, our both online and offline batches and we are also having our exclusive online batches in the late evening uh, for a geography optional so those who are interested uh, they can contact our office uh, for a exclusive online batch uh, that is going to be a live online batch so those who are planning to choose a geography optional uh they can come and contact uh, in our office or just call them so they will give you all the necessary details okay so for joining uh, our uh, various platforms uh you can check this description box and uh, we will meet again uh, in our last test which is going to get conducted uh, in the month of the may and all the best for you people for your exam and i hope you people will do excellent uh, in your exams okay so from my my side best wishes for you thanks a lot
Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to this discussion. Uh, as you know, my name is Viraj, and we'll be dealing with questions from polity and governance. All right. So let us start straight away. Uh, let us move on to question number. Let us move on to question number eleven. Question number eleven says polity starts now. So we'll move on to question number eleven. Okay. So I hope you are doing your studies well. Isi lakha to yar. I hope you are doing your studies well. देखो, it is a time when I will suggest you to not read anything new. Whatever you have read it, revise that. All right. And with respect to revision also, I will tell you that revision also you cannot do of the whole subject. What you can do is you can focus on those particular topics in the subject which are repeatedly asked. And for other topics, you have to go through questions. Through questions, you can do your revisions. All right. Don't be disheartened with respect to scores in your test. Uh, what happens is many a times we study in isolation and therefore we do not know how the other students are performing. All right. And based on that, basically this is a competitive exam. So it is not only important that you score how much you score. It is also important that the other people how much you score. Right. So you have to, in a way, look into the entire ecosystem and then understand where do you stand. तो अकेले अपना स्कोर देख के डिसहार्टन मत होना और ओवर जॉयस भी मत होना कीप योर स्कोरिंग वेल तो भाई मेरा तो क्लियर हो ही गया आई एम राइटिंग मींस दैट शुड आल्सो नॉट हैपन बोथ दिस सिचुएशन शुड बी अवॉइडेड इफ यू हैव एनी इश्यूज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू योर स्टडीज और यू आर फीलिंग डाउन यू आर डिसहार्टेंड यू कैन कम्युनिकेट टू मी वी विल सर्टेनली टॉक आई विल हेल्प यू आई एंड अदर फैकल्टीज ऑफ जीएस कोर विल एब्सोल्युटली हेल्प यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एनी प्रॉब्लम दैट यू फेस चलो नाउ लेट अस गो टू The question itself. Question number eleven. What does question number eleven say? Consider the following statements regarding state-centered dispute. All right. Consider the following statements regarding state-centered dispute. First statement: For a dispute to be filed under original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, state has to show. That their legal rights were violated. Their their that their legal right is violated. This statement is absolutely wrong. According to the judgment given by Supreme Court in State of Karnataka versus Union of India, Supreme Court has stated that state should consider that its rights has been violated and then go to the Supreme Court. So it is not that Supreme Court ab initio that Supreme Court me ab initio state has to show that their right has been right that their right has been you know violated state has to feel that their right has been violated then they have to go to the supreme court state has to feel that the dispute has arisen with respect to their legal rights and then they can go to the supreme court and after that you know supreme court after starting the proceedings will decide whether the rights of the state has been violated or not in the initial state it is not important in the initial stage it is not important for the state To showcase that their white right has been violated. All right, उनको बस उतना है कि हमारा rights के साथ state should feel that our rights has been compromised. Then the Supreme Court will decide whether the compromise of the rights has happened or not during the course of the trial. So first statement is absolutely wrong. Center can move to Supreme Court to you know seek permanent injunction against any state. Yes, absolutely. What is injunction? Injunction basically is a writ that is issued for the purpose of Stopping someone from doing something, injunction is stopping someone from doing something. All right. In original jurisdiction, Supreme Court uh, center does have the right to ask Supreme Court to provide for a permanent injunction. That can obviously happen, hundred percent happen. So second statement is correct. First is wrong. So our answer is B two only. Original jurisdiction. I know that you must be knowing about it, but what is it? It is when dispute arises. Between federating units, what basically is what basically is original jurisdiction? Original jurisdiction is a type of case that can come to a particular court only at the first instance. For example, if there is fight between government of India and state of say Maharashtra, okay, this fight can go only and only to the Supreme Court. All right, that is called as original jurisdiction. That is called as original jurisdiction. All right. So eleventh question we are done. I hope you have understood it. Now let us go to question number twelve. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व में सॉरी सॉरी What do you see? Implementation of goods and services taxes, that is, the goods and services tax, that is GST, is an example of which of the following? Obviously, it is example of cooperative federalism. It is example of cooperative federalism. So we are done with question number twelve. Also, moving ahead now to question number thirteen. Question number thirteen. देख लेते हैं. Question number thirteen. Guys, you answer it. I want you people to answer it. Question number thirteen. What does question number thirteen state? <coughs> What does question number thirteen state? Which of the following is are non-constitutional, non-statutory bodies? Law Commission, Niti Aayog, Com Planning Commission, Competition Commission. All right. Out of these four, which bodies are non-constitutional and non-statutory? Go ahead, guys. Please give your answers. <coughs> I'm waiting for your answer. Okay. So Pranje has said it is D. Okay, Pranje, you are right. It is D. All right. All the three bodies, Law Commission, Niti Aayog, and Planning Commission. Planning Commission was of course re replaced by Law Commission in 2014. All these three bodies are created. <coughs> I'm so sorry. All these three bodies have been created by executive actions. All right, they have been created by executive actions. What does it mean? It means that the executive of the center or the state have the power to create a body. All right, create a body. Which would, in a way, ease their working? Which would, in a way, streamline their working? Which would, in a way, help in execution of certain work? So that power has been given to both union executives and the state executives. All right. What is a constitutional body? Constitutional body basically is the body that is created by the constitution itself. What is a statutory body? A statutory body is a body that is created by a particular law. All right, that has been created by a particular law. Now, guys, you tell me, is CBI a statutory body or not? All right, this is my question to you. Bolo, mujhe CBI is a statutory body or not? Moving on to the next question, question number fourteen. देख लेते हैं. What is question number fourteen? Question number fourteen states: Consider the following statements regarding Supreme Court's power to do complete justice. The power under Article one hundred and forty-two are supplementary to the power bestowed upon the Supreme Court. Yes. Absolutely right. What is Article one hundred and forty two? One hundred and forty two is one hundred and forty two. Basically, is <clears throat> for the purpose of giving justice, for the purpose of providing justice. If Supreme Court has to take some extraordinary step, all right, then Supreme Court is allowed to do so under Article one hundred and forty two. All right. Okay, Chetna Saxena, you are absolutely right. CBI is not a statutory body. All right. So first statement is correct. Second statement: the scope and power to do complete justice is defined in the Constitution itself. No, it has to be interpreted in by the Supreme Court. Look, whenever the question is with respect to whether this particular term has been defined in the Constitution, most of the time the answer is no. Most of the time the answer is a negative. Constitution of India is detailed. But it has not gone into definition of each and everything. For example, Constitution has not gone into the definition of what is untouchability. Constitution has not got into the definition of what is citizenship. All right. So this is one simple mantra that I can give you. If the question or a statement is of this type, the complete definition is very difficult to be provided in the Constitution. Rarely it is. There rarely it happens. All right. <clears throat> so what we see is. In this particular question, first statement is correct, second is incorrect, third third statement. This power is closely associated with the doctrine of judicial activism. Obviously, obviously, if because this power is available to the judiciary, what does judiciary do? What does judiciary tend to do, or what do what do people say that judiciary tends to do? Is it includes itself, or it transgresses the borders of separation of powers and gets into The zone of legislature and executive gets into the zone of legislature and executive. So one is correct, three is correct. Our answer therefore will be C. Fourteenth answer therefore obviously will be C. Let us look at question number. Yes, Amarnath, you are all you are uh, you are right. You are right with respect to CBI. Your statement is absolutely correct. Very good. Moving on to question number fifteen. Question number fifteen. I want you people to answer. Factual question from current affairs, and a very simple one. Report on municipal finances seen 
इन न्यूज रिसेंटली इज रिलीज बाई विच अमाउंट द फॉलोइंग इंस्टीट्यूशन चलो यार बोलो आई वॉन्ट यू टू आंसर इवन इफ इट इज रॉन्ग जस्ट गेट इट आउट इट्स ओके वी विल करेक्ट इट इट्स बेटर दैट यू आंसर इन करेक्टली नाउ देन ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ मे ट्वेंटी एथ मे के दिन सबको ठीक से पढ़ाई करके जाना है सब लोग ठीक से पढ़ाई कर रहे हैं मैं जान रहा हूं शांति से जाना है दिमाग शांत रख के जाओ द ओनली डिफरेंस बिटवीन दो कैंडिडेट हु क्लियर देयर प्रिलियम्स एंड हु डोंट क्लियर देयर प्रिलियम्स इज देखो प्रिलियम्स इज एन इंटेंसिव वन डे वर्क ऑल राइट सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट चीज इसमें है उस दिन के लिए शांति से रहो ठीक है सुबह जाओ आराम से चाय पी के एग्जाम में बैठो देखो नथिंग कैटेस्ट्रॉपिक विल हैपन ऑन दैट डे ऑल राइट आराम से अपना पेपर दो यू विल यू विल मोस्ट प्रोबेबली क्लियर अगर दिमाग ठंडा रख के करोगे ना यू विल मोस्ट प्रोबेबली क्लियर योर प्रिलियम्स एग्जामिनेशन ऑल राइट सो राजदीप हैज you know answer this question as reserve bank of india rajdeep you are absolutely right reserve bank of india is the right answer reserve bank of india ne you know a report on finance municipal finances nikali thi and according to this report municipal corporations in india municipal bodies in india are with respect to finances in fact they are depleting theek hai wo negative mein ja rahe hain to their financial status is actually going down south their financial status is actually going down south all right moving on to the next question agla question ki taraf bada jaye question number 16 okay consider the following statements regarding directive principles of state policy dpsp kaun sa part part 4 first statement article 31c expanded the scope of directive principles of course article 31 article 31c did it which amendment allow it to which amendment allowed the same to happen which amendment allowed the same to happen that particular answer you will give me theek hai article 31c ke bare mein you know that it did expand the scope of directive principles but through which amendment it happened that you will tell me all right moving on to the second statement directive principles under part 4 of the constitution directive principles under part 4 of the constitution are mere declarations of instructions which are to be observed and secured by the state at will of course this is also correct or answer is c dekho directive principles mein na if there is a question by upsc it revolves around some specific patterns first and foremost directive principles are you know taken from which constitution in the government of india act 1935 what were directive principles called directive principles has three sources of inspiration na socialist ideology uh, gandhian ideology and then we have liberal ideology so you have to know which directive principle comes from which ideology all right you have to also know ki they are not justice justiciable what is not justiciable so you cannot take the state to the court ki bhai my directive principle is not implemented third next thing is directive principles are for the purpose of establishing social and economic equality all right directive principles are for the purpose of establishing social and economic equality what with respect to uh, you know directive principles and fundamental rights together are called conscience of the constitution with respect to directive principles again pranjay you are absolutely right 24 25th constitution amendment act again with respect to fundamental rights and directive principles supreme court has said neither has overbearing power over other theek hai so you cannot say that always directive principles are important and you can also not say <coughs> that always fundamental rights are important what do you have to do is harmonious construction all right harmonious construction with respect to directive principles and fundamental rights so answer to question number 16 is c moving on to question number 17 moving on to question number 17 very easy question 17 wala theek hai what does question number 17 say consider the following statements equal opportunity equality of opportunity in the matters of public employment protection of life and personal liberty abolition of untouchability and prohibition of its practice right to elementary education which of the following is are the rights to equality under indian constitution obviously rights to equality are mentioned from 714 to 18 so what are they One and three, all right. One and three. So D obviously is our right answer. Now you will tell me Article twenty one and twenty one A. 
fall under which category of fundamental rights? Article 21, that is statement 2 and 21A, that is statement 4. They fall under which category of fundamental rights? That you will tell me. Come on, let us go ahead. Yes, Chetna, you are absolutely right. 17 ka answer is D. Thank you for contributing. Students, please contribute. You know, this YouTube live, you know, we could have just recorded the sessions and given it to you. YouTube live is provided so that we can interact with students. Please go ahead and interact with me through this particular platform of YouTube. Koi bhi doubt ho. Not, with, not just with respect to the questions that we are discussing. Quality mein agar dusra koi bhi doubt ho. Prelims preparation se related dusra koi bhi doubt ho. I am here for you. Ask me. I will talk to you. I will address your doubts. Alright. Or agar yaha nahi kar sakte to telegram channel pe karo. But because you know we are here. Other students are also watching you. They can be, you know, even they will be helped. Agar aapka doubt, aisa raha, your common doubt hai with other students, so they will also be helped. So please go ahead and, <coughs> and ask your doubts. Hai? Okay, Pranjay Nigam, absolutely right, right to freedom mein aata hai wo. Question number 18. The first constitutional amendment to the Indian constitution contains which of the following? First statement, saving of laws, providing for, ex for acquisition of eight states. Yes. First statement is correct. The first constitutional amendment was brought so that land reforms could take place. Deco, at that point of time, right to property was a fundamental right. So the state, if it acquired land of someone, this could have created this could have created a dispute in court. All right, this could have created a dispute in court. The person whose land would have been acquired without his will could have gone to the High Court or the Supreme Court under Article 226 or under Article 32, whatever the case might be. And then <coughs> the state will have the state will have to have got involved in that particular suit, that particular lawsuit. To avoid this and to implement land reforms in the manner in which Congress had promised before independence, what did Congress do? They brought in ninth schedule. And what they said, whatever laws are placed in ninth schedule cannot be questioned in any court of law. Second, addition of reasonable restrictions on fundamental right yes in fact this particular this particular addition by first constitutional amendment was recently challenged in supreme court and supreme court has said that supreme court has said that the amendment stands good and it is not in violation of the constitution all right third and fourth authorize the state to nationalize any trade no inclusion of new subjects in union list no so three and fourth are not part of first constitutional amendment, it is A, 1 and 2 only. Moving on. Question number 19. Moving on to question number 19. What does question number 19 say? Okay, question number 19. Consider the following statements regarding Sunset TV. It was created by merging Rajya Sabha TV and Lok Sabha TV, yes. Of course, all of us do watch it. All right. Second statement: Sunset TV broadcast program in Sunset TV broadcast programs in all lang all Schedule Eight languages of the Indian Constitution. No, it is only the program broadcast on Sunset TV is only in English, in English and Hindi. With respect to other languages, DD has its Look, uh, DD has this regional language channels. For example, Durdarshan has a regional language channel in Marathi that is Durdarshan Sayadri. In the same way, Durdarshan ke languages ka channel alag alag hai. But Sansan TV, it is one channel and its programs only come in English or Hindi. Alright, so remember that particular fact. Yaha pe A will be the right answer. A will be the right answer. Yes, Vikram, you are absolutely right. Chalo. <coughs> with respect to now moving on to question number 20 moving on to question number 20 okay consider the following statements regarding parliament of india the tenure of lok sabha is fixed whereas rajya sabha is a permanent house obviously obviously first statement is right tenure of lok sabha is for five years rajya sabha one third of its member retire after every two years Tenure of each member is 6 years. Alright. 
स्टेटमेंट टू लोकसभा रिप्रेजेंट द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया वेर एज राज्यसभा रिप्रेजेंट काउंसिल ऑफ स्टेट यस हंड्रेड पर्सेंट इनफैक्ट राज्यसभा वॉज स्पेसिफिकली क्रिएटेड टू प्रोटेक्ट द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द स्टेट देर आर अदर रीजन ऑल्सो बट दिस वॉज द मेजर रीजन टू प्रोटेक्ट द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ स्टेट ऑल राइट वी हैव मॉडल्ड अवर राज्यसभा ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सेनेट ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट देर आर सम डिफरेंसेज दो बट ठीक है मतलब अवर आइडिया ऑफ हैविंग राज्यसभा हैज कम फ्रॉम सेनेट ऑफ यूएस मूविंग ऑन मूविंग ऑन हाँ ट्वेंटी का सी आंसर है चेतना यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट बट लेट मी फिनिश द डिस्कशन आई आर जेन्युनली थैंक यू फॉर गेटिंग इन्वॉल्व द राज्यसभा डज नॉट हैव ओवर राइडिंग पावर द राज्यसभा डज हैव ओवर राइडिंग पावर ओवर द मनी बिल पास बाय द लोकसभा नो एब्सोल्युटली नॉट राज्यसभा हैज द डे ऑफ हैज फोर्टीन डेज time video a uh, time window within which it can respond to the bill all right if it does not do it in 14 days it is considered that rajya sabha has passed the bill so no overriding powers are available to rajya sabha in case of money bill so our answer is 1 and 2 our answer is therefore c moving on now to question number 63 a uh, 66 sorry uh Saurabh Singh has asked the question. Not fixed, na sir. It is due to government document. No, no, no. Saurabh Singh, you know what you are speaking is absolutely right. If the government loses majority, so obviously the elections, the Lok Sabha will get dissolved early. But then that is an exceptional case. All right, देखो last time I have explained you. When it comes to general studies, when it comes to general studies, you have to answer the question based on. the statement which talks about general condition so if i say ki the term of lok sabha is for 5 years that statement is true but if i say under no circumstances lok sabha can be dissolved before 5 years so that statement is wrong so pehla statement kya hua it's a general statement so hence it is true <coughs> if i use such a statement jisme i avoid all exceptions then that statement becomes false so your doubt is absolutely correct i i you know uh, I can relate to it क्योंकि मेरा एक बार ऐसे ही wrong हुआ है exam में but general statement के हिसाब से जाओ if the statement is worded in such a way that it eliminates all the exceptions तो then that is a different thing तो जैसे मैंने बोला ना अगर the statement is कि under no circumstances लोक सभा can be dissolved within फाइव years तो then that is a wrong statement all right I hope you have understood it I hope you have understood it ठीक है okay I hope मैंने विक्रम का भी डाउट सॉल्व कर लिया है द स्टेटमेंट इज एब्सोल्युटली राइट टेन यूर ऑफ लोकसभा इज फाइव इयर्स ठीक है दिस इज अ जनरल स्टेटमेंट एक्सेप्शन में हैपन बट इन जनरल स्टडीज पेपर हम लोग जनरल स्टेटमेंट के हिसाब से जाएंगे वी विल कंसिडर जनरल स्टेटमेंट टू बी करेक्ट ऑल राइट अगेन आई एम सेइंग इफ द स्टेटमेंट इज सच की इट एलिमिनेट्स ऑल द एक्सेप्शन देन दैट स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग ऑल राइट Yes, it does not say that it is fixed, but it says that it is for five years, sir. Okay, Rajdeep, sir, I have a doubt in DPSP, sir. As DPSPs are fundamental to governance, how can state ignore it at will? देखो ignore का मतलब है if they do not take it into consideration due to any reason, then that is fine. Ignore का मतलब ये नहीं है, ठीक है? Don't take ignore as कि ध्यान ही नहीं देना. It is कि At that point of time, there are some other issues. They say, for example, in 1950, in 1950, it is not as if the first government or the second government did not implement DPSPs or did not think about DPSPs. It was only that they have to, you know, उनको अपना ध्यान कहीं और करना पड़ा because of the developments, developmental stage of the country. All right, ignoring don't take it in a negative sense. ये जो टर्म है इग्नोर दे डोंट टेक इट इन अ नेगेटिव सेंस इग्नोर का मतलब है दे आर नाउ एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम मे बी द गवर्नमेंट इज कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन समथिंग एल्स ऑल राइट सौरभ एंड राजदीप आई हैव आई थिंक दैट आई हैव रिजॉल्ट आई हैव रिजॉल्व योर डाउट्स इफ देर इज एनीथिंग एल्स कीप पोस्ट कीप यू नो कीप पोस्टिंग ऑल राइट चलो 66 की तरफ बढ़ते हैं आई एम हैप्पी दैट यू आर गेटिंग इन्वॉल्व क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स लेट अस गो 
विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग फ्रीडम ऑफ रिलीजन अंडर पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आर करेक्ट ऑल पर्सन आर इक्वली एंटाइटल टू फ्रीडम ऑफ कॉन्साइंस एंड द राइट फ्रीली टू प्रोफेस प्रैक्टिस एंड प्रोपोगेट रिलीजन एब्सोल्यूटली राइट एब्सोल्यूटली राइट दिस इज आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी फाइव ओ अरे बापे This is Article Twenty Five. All right. Every religious denomination has the right to establish and maintain institutions for religious and charitable functions, uh, charitable purposes. Again, the, the again, this particular statement is right. It is part of. It is included in Part Three. It is included in Part Three. Ah, uh, in Article Twenty Six. All right. In Article Twenty Six. Third. No person shall be compelled to pay any tax for promotion or maintenance of any particular religion or religious dominations. Article twenty, yes, twenty six. हो गया ये है twenty seven. Statement four. Statement four. No religious instruction shall be provided in any educational institution wholly maintained out of state fund. This is also right. This is this is Article twenty eight. So all the four. स्टेटमेंट आर एक्चुअली पार्ट ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट और आंसर डेर फोर इज डी और आंसर डेर फोर इज डी ठीक है यस विक्रम यू वेरी यू आर एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट आंसर इज डी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कॉपरेटिंग एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर गेटिंग इन्वॉल्व इन दिस डिस्कशन अदर स्टूडेंट ऑल्सो प्लीज गेट इन्वॉल्व प्लीज यू नो चैट विथ मी टॉक टू मी लेट मी नो यूर प्रॉब्लम नॉट ओनली विद रिस्पेक्ट टू नॉट ओनली विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस पेपर बट ओवरऑल ठीक है आई एम हैप्पी टू हेल्प एंड आई विल हेल्प यू ऑल कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग Consider the following statements regarding the President of India. First, nominated members of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha are included in Electoral College responsible for the election of the President. No, only elected members are involved. We know that, you know, nominated members are involved in impeachment, not in election. The President cannot be member of either house of the par Parliament. Absolutely, President is actually. part and parcel of the parliament not member of the parliament <coughs> indian parliament consists of president lok sabha and rajya sabha third the election commission of india is consulted by president on question of disqualification of mps absolutely right so our answer is c 2 and 3 our answer is 2 and 3 67 ka answer is c chalo moving on question number 68 Question number sixty-eight. Bahini scheme, sometimes seen in the news, is associated with which of the following purposes? Tell me. Sixty-eight का आंसर क्या होगा? This scheme is related to. This scheme is actually related to uh, sanitary pads. So it was launched by. Tell me which government, which state government has launched it? Which state government has launched this particular scheme? I'll give you a hint. It is in northeast. It is in northeastern part of India. Okay. Now we're moving on to question number sixty-nine. Question number sixty-nine. पे चलते हैं. Consider the following statements regarding NEAT three point zero. All right. So National Education Alliance for Technology. The question is based on that. it is a single platform to provide the best developed edtech solutions and courses to students of the country this question, this particular statement is absolutely correct this particular statement is absolutely correct second all india the all india council for technical education is implementing the agency of neet yes every shortlisted company will have to offer free coupons to the extent of 25% of the total registration For their solutions through NEET portal, all the three statements, all the statements are three. So answer is sixty-nine. The answer is D. All right, sixty-nine. The answer is D. Moving on to question number seventy. Question number seventy. की तरफ चलते हैं. अरे बोलो तो कौन से state government ने लाया था बंदिनी scheme? ठीक है. बताओ. Question number seventy. तब तक देख लेते हैं. The PM with reference to PM Dev I E E I N E consider the following statement. What does this particular term 
what is its full form it is prime minister's developmental initiative for northeastern region prime minister's developmental initiative for northeastern region all right <coughs> सिक्सटी नाइन का आंसर विक्रम इज डी इट्स ऑल ऑफ द अब ठीक है इट्स डी इफ देर इज एनी डिस्प्यूट वी कैन यू नो सॉर्ट इट आउट बट द आंसर इज डी नो प्रॉब्लम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डेट ओके सेवेंटी का देख लेते हैं सेवेंटी का देख लेते हैं विथ रेफरेंस टू दिस ओके इट इज अ सेंट्रल सेक्टर स्कीम फॉर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ डिवाइन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ डिवाइन प्लेसेज विच कम्स अंडर चार धाम एब्सोल्युटली नॉट चार धाम is located in northern part of india whereas this scheme is related to this particular scheme is related to northeastern development of northeastern region second second statement the scheme aims to creation of infrastructure <coughs> support industries social development projects and create livelihood initiatives for youth and women absolutely right our answer is b only two <coughs> chalo now moving on to questions on ir questions on ir फटाफट देख लेते हैं एटी नाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी नाइन अरे भाई कुछ बोलो भी इसे वन वे कम्युनिकेशन क्यों रख रहे हो डाउट्स पूछो प्रॉब्लम्स बताओ मुझे बाल्टिक सी बाल्टिक पाइपलाइन प्रोजेक्ट एक मिनट इसको थोड़ा सा आई होप यू आर नाउ एबल टू सी दिस ओके क्या है क्वेश्चन बाल्टिक पाइपलाइन प्रोजेक्ट्स के बारे में बाल्टिक पाइप प्रोजेक्ट समटाइम्स इन द न्यूज कनेक्ट्स विच अमोंग द फॉलोइंग पेयर्स पेयर्स ऑफ रीजन तो आंसर इज ए ठीक है नॉर्वे एंड पोलैंड इनफैक्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर पाइपलाइन ट्रांसफर्स गैस फ्रॉम पोलैंड इट ट्रांसफर्स गैस गैस लाइन टू डेनमार्क एंड पोलैंड ऑलरेडी डेनमार्क एंड पोलैंड तो यहाँ पे सिर्फ पोलैंड दिया है ना डेनमार्क भी लिख देते हैं रिमेम्बर दिस आगे बढ़ते हैं विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इंडियन सिटीज गॉट लिस्टेड एस टाइम मैगजीन फिफ्टी एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी डेस्टिनेशन टू एक्सप्लोर इन इट्स लिस्ट ऑफ वर्ल्ड ग्रेटेस्ट प्लेसेस ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू मुंबई जयपुर अहमदाबाद गुवाहाटी इट इज अहमदाबाद वाई इज इट अहमदाबाद क्योंकि उस मैगजीन में आया था दैट इज वाइट इज अहमदाबाद सो अहमदाबाद प्लस केरला दिस टू रीजन ऑफ इंडिया गॉट देर मैं इन टाइम्स मैगजीन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू फिफ्टी इट एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी डेस्टिनेशन टू एक्सप्लोर नो वन मोर थिंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अहमदाबाद इट इज अरी हिस्टोरिकल प्लेस बिल्ड इन हिस्टोरिकल सिटी बिल्ड इन फिफ्टीन सेंचुरी बाय 15th century by Sultan Ahmed Shah. ठीक है. Ahmed Shah was one of the rivals of Mughals. Not Mughals. Uh, not Mughals. Tughlaqs. 91. Namsai declaration. Seen in the news recently. Yes, they are different. Nordic and Baltic pipelines are different. Yashi, you are right. All right. Ah, uh, Namsai declarations. seen in <coughs> news recently <coughs> is related with <coughs> sorry which of the following two regions of india it is assam and arunachal what is it it is a declaration by which they have lessened the border disputes lessened that border disputes with each other all right so earlier there were around 126 border disputes between assam and arunachal so have they have taken them down to 83 or 84 chalo aage badhte hain 92 92 let us look at 92 question number 92 dekhte hain uh, with respect to With respect to question number ninety-two, global peace index, global peace index is associated with uh, economic Institute of Economic and Peace. ठीक है तो one is B. World Press Index, World Press uh, World Press Freedom Index is associated with Reporters Without Borders. So two is D. 
थर्ड इज हैंडली पासपोर्ट इंडेक्स हैंडली पासपोर्ट इंडेक्स इज एसोसिएटेड विथ आइटा दैट इज इंटरनेशनल एयर ट्रांसपोर्ट एसोसिएशन सो थ्री इज सी इंक्लूसिव इंटरनेट इंडेक्स इज एसोसिएटेड विथ इकोनॉमिक इज एंड इज एसोसिएटेड विथ इकोनॉमिस्ट इंटेलिजेंस यूनिट सो वन इज वन इज टू सेकेंड का ऑप्शन है सेकेंड का ऑप्शन है डी थर्ड इज सी एंड फोर्थ का है वन से फोर्थ का है ए तो चलो मैच द फॉलोइंग करके देखते हैं तो आंसर इज सी ऑल राइट आंसर इज सी चलो आगे बढ़ते हैं नाइन्टी थ्री ब्रिक्स यस चेतना योर ओके ठीक है ऑल राइट क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी थ्री विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इनिशिएटिव वॉज आर अनाउंस्ड एट द रिसेंटली कन्वेड बेजिंग डिक्लेरेशन ऑफ ब्रिक्स बेजिंग डिक्लेरेशन एंड प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर एक्शन नो कोई प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर एक्शन नहीं आया ठीक है देर वॉज प्रपोजल फॉर वन बट इट डिड नॉट कम अप एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ ब्रिक्स डिजिटल इकोनॉमिक पार्टनरशिप फ्रेमवर्क यस ब्रिक्स हाई लेवल फोरम ऑन ट्रेडिशनल मेडिसिन यस तो आंसर इज बी ठीक है नाइंटी फोर का नाइंटी थ्री का आंसर इज बी मूविंग ऑन 94 क्वेश्चन नंबर 94 विद रेफरेंस टू मेजर नॉन नेटो एलाय कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट दिस डेस्टिनेशन दिस डेजिग्नेशन ऑटोमेटिकली इंक्लूड्स अ म्यूचुअल डिफेंस पैक्ट विद यूएस नो एब्सोल्युटली नॉट म्यूचुअल डिफेंस पैक्ट का मतलब है इफ समवन अटैक्स यू इफ समवन अटैक्स योर एलाय यू कंसीडर इट टू बी अटैक ऑन योरसेल्फ एंड यू गो ऑन अ वॉर ठीक है मोस्टली यू विल गो ऑन अ वॉर इट इज लाइक यू नो कॉलेज कैंटीन कॉलेज कैंटीन मेरे दोस्त को मारा तो मुझे मारा स्टेटमेंट टू a major nato a major non nato ally is eligible for loans of material supplies or equipment for development testing yes this is correct again this particular word is important eligible being a major non nato ally does not guarantee you loans or materials or supply of materials it makes you eligible for them all right it makes you eligible for them chalo moving to the next statement uh, in this question therefore the answer is b only to Moving to the next statement and moving to the next question. Ninety-five. Consider the following statements on nuclear weapons. United Nations Security Council is a binding resolution. United Nations Security Council in a binding resolution reaffirmed that nuclear wars cannot be won. No, as a quick resolution passed. No, why? Ha, they have talked about. they have talked about moving towards controlling the proliferation of nuclear weapons but they have never talked about ki how bad the nuclear war will be or nobody can win nuclear war statement 2 north korea never signed the non proliferation treaty this is wrong north korea was part of non proliferation treaty it had signed it but then later it backed out theek hai 95 question mein first statement is incorrect second statement is incorrect third statement First January 1967 was the cut-off date for declaration of nuclear weapon state status. Yes, so जिसके पास nuclear weapons था before first January 1967, that states are considered to be nuclear weapon states. So it includes the P5 members. All right, it includes the P5 members. So third statement is correct. First and second are wrong. Our answer, therefore, they are asking us to find the incorrect statement. Our answer, therefore, is one and two only. Answer is one and two. Moving on to question number ninety six. Question number ninety six. Which of the following are the founding partners of Mineral Security Partnership? Okay, Mineral Security Partnership is an initiative of United Nations, uh, United States. Sorry, and this in a way was created so that the mineral crunch that has occurred in the past couple of years, due to China holding a dominant position in the mineral market, that should not happen again because. you know when china uh, china uses this to arm twist the west and the countries that are not in its favor so to avoid this unhone kya kiya united nations ne kya kiya united states ne kya kiya mineral security partnership uh, <coughs> banaya hai jiske members hai sweden south korea and germany all right so here the answer is 1 2 and 
द आंसर इज ए द आंसर इज ए क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी सेवन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी सेवन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग सस्टेनेबल फाइनेंसिंग मॉडल ऑफ डब्ल्यू एच ओ इट टारगेट्स टू इंक्रीज द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ मेंबर कंट्रीज बाय अबाउट फिफ्टी परसेंट बाय टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी नाइन एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट दिस कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन आर वॉलेंट्री ऑल राइट मोस्ट ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट आर मेड टू इंटरनेशनल फोरम आर वॉलेंट्री सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट दिस कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन विल बी लीगली बाइंडिंग ऑन मेंबर कंट्रीज अब भी बात किया ना नहीं कर सकते their voluntary contributions are voluntary or answer is a only one question number 98 question number 98 let us see ek minute i will widen the screen okay i hope now it is visible consider the following statements regarding air propulsion state system air Air independent propulsion system is a marine propulsion technology that allows a non nuclear submarine to operate without access to atmospheric oxygen obviously isliye to banaya theek hai main objective of uh, this system is to allow non nuclear submarines to operate without to operate without access to atmospheric uh, oxygen first statement is correct second statement second statement the diesel electric submarines must come to the surface or close to it to run their generators to recharge the batteries that propel them under water both statements are correct all right one and two both are correct so our answer is c 99 dekh lete hain theek hai With reference to international refugee and migration, consider the following. It will serve as the preliminary governmental forum, preliminary governmental global platform to discuss and share, to discuss and share progress on implementation of global compact for migration. Yes. this basically had come up after the issue of migration in syria and also later on with respect to the migration of rohingya rohingyas in myanmar second statement the gcm is the first intergovernmentally negotiated agreement which is binding on members of united nations absolutely not there are others there are others agreements there are other agreements also of united nations that are binding on the member countries so second statement is obviously wrong third statement the new york declaration for refugees and migrants is an initiative of united nations high commission for refugees yes our answer therefore is a 1 and 3 boltzmann medal 2022 seen in the news recently was awarded in which of the following fields the answer to this is statistical physics answer to this is statistical physics all right and indian an indian name by the name of deepak dhar was awarded this particular award was presented with this award and hence it is important to be known all right friends i am done for the day uh, politica or governance ka or ir ka questions i have discussed now uh, uh, saurabh sir will take over and he will discuss with you economy please you know economy is subject of concepts even if the concepts are not in the paper even then if you have problem with respect to anything in economy please post your doubt saurabh sir is kind enough he will answer your doubts thank you so much bye see you koi doubt rahega to telegram pe bata dena bye
Hello everyone, my name is Saurabh Mishra, I am the faculty of Indian economy here. Now we are going to see questions which are from the Indian economy section in this test and we will try to find out whether the question is from the conceptual uh, area or there is factual information we, which you should be aware of. So I would request all of you who are seeing the uh, discussion, try to post your uh, doubts or the answers of those questions. Uh, let me see that what answers you have attempted. Now let us start with the first question then. Now with reference to goods and services tax, GST council. Now you see uh, it is not from current affairs. Now you see uh, GST is a contemporary issue for us and eventually it has become GST council has become a static topic for UPSC as well. So you may expect a question on GST council composition and functions, right? So all the recommendation of GST council are binding on the parliament and the state legislature. Now Supreme Court has said that definitely uh, it is not binding uh, to parliament and uh, uh, state legislature in the case Mohit Minran's case. So uh, first statement becomes wrong here. Now second statement you see every decision on the council is to be taken by a majority of not less than two third of the weighted votes. Now if you have seen the composition and the functions of GST council you know it is the three fourth of the weighted votes. So second statement also becomes wrong. They are asking incorrect. So both 1 and 2 are incorrect, right? Now look at the next question. Second, with reference to cash reserve uh, ratio and statutory liquidity ratio, CRR and SLR. Basic concept of economy whenever you are starting with your banking uh, section, these are the concepts you read, right? CRR, SLR, repo, reverse repo, etc. So these kind of questions are very easy to attempt if you have a conceptual clarity upon it. Now, I'll start with the second statement here. You see, uh, then we'll come back to the first statement. Second statement says, unlike CRR, the banks don't earn any returns from the money maintained in the form of SLR. Now, here the concepts are reversed. Banks do not earn any return on the CRR, but they definitely earn return on SLR. So, uh, this statement is being or the concept has been reversed here. So statement 2 from the basic understanding you can uh, be very assured that the statement 2 is wrong. Now if you know this, if you eliminate option 2, you will directly come to the answer B here, 1 and 3. Let us look at the 1 and 3 as well to understand. If a public sector bank in India opens a branch in IFSC, then the, that branch does not need to maintain CRR and SLR with the Reserve Bank of India. Yes, if any financial institution and its branch is being open in IFSC, which is International Financial Service Center, it is treated as non-resident Indian situated out, outside India. And there all the uh, transaction has to happen uh, in other currencies than the Indian rupees, right? So because their territorial, uh, you can say uh, it is going beyond the territorial uh, boundary of India virtually, that is why the rules of banking regulation acts will not apply to it. So CRR and SLR, they do not need to maintain. So first statement is right. Third statement, the CRR has to be maintained in cash, whereas SLR can be maintained in either cash or in asset. Definitely you know from the basic concept itself that it is right statement. So answer will be one and three. <coughs> now, look at the third question. Consider the following statement with reference to prompt corrective action PCA framework of the Reserve Bank of India. Now prompt corrective action you know to uh, check the irregularities in happening in the financial institutions RBI has put PCA framework that if conditions are fulfilled there then certain restriction will be imposed on the financial institution there. Now look at the statements here. If a bank is under PCA framework then restrictions will be there on promoters or owners to bring in capital and branch expansion. Yes, the owners, owners will be on promoters and owners there. Right statement. PCA framework is not applicable to regional rural banks, payment bank and small financial banks. Yes, these are applicable to the scheduled banks and N NBFCs. Now RBI evaluate various banks based on the parameters of capital asset quality and returns on asset. Earlier it used to happen like this, 
but recently the return on asset condition has been removed because of this reason it is a wrong statement right fourth it applies to housing finance companies also so fourth statement is also wrong because housing finance co corporation and non deposit taking nbfcs are excluded from it so only the scheduled commercial banks plus the deposit taking nbfcs are considered under this pca framework fine so uh, what would be the right option here one and two no uh, they are asking correct options right so three and four will be wrong there one and two will be the right so answer will be d here now the fourth question consider the following statement with reference to surface act and bankruptcy code ibc bankruptcy code you know uh, 2016 now both of the things deals with you can say uh, the bankruptcy of an institution how the process should happen uh, what kind of ratios are given to the creditors importance to the creditors so those kind of things are there but there is a major difference between surface and ibc code what is the difference read the first statement the surface act protects only secured creditors while insolvency and bankruptcy code guarantees the interest of both secured and unsecured creditors yes it is a right statement even the ibc uh, further subdivides the creditors into financial creditors and operational creditors financial creditors means what who have contributed in terms of money right so their interest has to be taken care of so in priority they will be at a higher priority but there are operational creditors also who has given you uh, you can say any kind of op uh, operational support or any kind of services be it in terms of logistic be it in terms of uh, transportation so ibc takes care of operational creditors as well so first statement is right here second insolvency and bankruptcy code shall prevail over any provisions of the surface if there is a inconsistency inconsist consistency between the two yes if in a situation there is conflict between surface and ibc so ibc will prevail ibc act uh, of code of 2016 uh, the section 141 says that during the insolvency resolution process defined in the code the code take precedence over surface so statement 2 is also right here right look at the third statement cooperative banks can only use ibc not surface act for recovery of debt from its defaulters earlier it used to be the case but recently supreme court allowed cooperative banks also to take uh, use of surface act if they want right so statement 3 is wrong here so answer will be 1 and 2 answer c right now look at this fifth question consider the following statement regarding the employment scenario in india now this kind of question generally upsc asks to understand your basic understanding common sensical approach about the indian economy whether you understand the unemployment scenario whether you understand the uh, growth scenario whether you understand the uh, interlinkages between these two so those kind of awareness based question they ask look at the statements here agriculture sector has more employment elasticity as compared to other sectors of economy now here the keyword is employment elasticity what do we mean by employment el elasticity it means that if 1% of growth happens considering to this 1% growth how much of employment has increased so this is the elasticity now if you see the numbers in the agriculture so agriculture accounts for around 16% of the gdp and it accounts for around 47% of labor participation so you see 1% increase in uh, growth in agriculture will lead to more generation of employment 
सो इंप्लॉयमेंट इलास्टिसिटी इज वेरी हाइयर इन एग्रीकल्चर तो विद दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग यू कैन से दैट द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज राइट दैट एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर हैज मोर इंप्लॉयमेंट इलास्टिसिटी एज कंपेयर टू अदर सेक्टर ऑफ इकोनॉमी लुक एट द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट the proportions of self employed workers are significantly higher in rural areas due to the dominance of small scale agriculture now this statement can become a little difficult to comprehend in a way that what it is saying self employed workers are more in rural areas and why is that so because there are dominance of small scale agriculture so people who are involving themselves in small scale agriculture they are uh, you can say self employed workers there and because of that in rural areas the number is higher so in this case both the statements are right so answer will be c here right okay so before i move forward let us look at the okay so you are participating and posting your answers so start posting answer for the sixth one let me look at the options question here which one of the following statement most appropriately defines refined core inflation now have you read in your basics you definitely would have read about core inflation what is core inflation and how it is different from headline inflation now when we calculate core inflation we exclude food and beverages and fuel and light from the calculation of headline inflation and then we say it is core inflation right but there is an issue when we are excluding food uh, fuel and light uh, and when nso through cpi calculates it the petrol and diesel are not counted in fuel and light it is counted in transport and communication so when nso calculates the cpi it includes uh, the core inflation also includes fuel and, sorry <coughs> petrol and diesel but actually it is it should should be eliminated from there hence economic survey coined this term refined core inflation so this is why it can become a very important question in this year's examination that what do we mean by refined core inflation it is just that from the core inflation the prices of fuel sorry prices of petrol and diesel is also eliminated or deducted which was under the category of transport and communication fine so read the option a here that it is a type of inflation which excludes main fuel and food items from the headline retail inflation so it is similar to the core inflation but it is refined why because petrol and diesel is also deducted from there now look at the so answer would be a here fine now look at the seventh question consider the following statements first the service sector has more than 50% contribution to the gross value added to india yes service sector is the major contributor uh, it contributes more than 50% if you look at the numbers it is uh, almost 53% of gva there right so first statement is correct in that sense look at the second statement the share of agriculture in total employment has decreased during last 5 years in earlier one question we discussed that why agriculture in agriculture employment elasticity is uh, very high so when agriculture grows employment also grows with that and this statement says that in last 5 years the share of agriculture in total employment has reduced which is a wrong statement if you want to know the numbers here in 2017 18 it was around 35% Uh, which increased to 36.1% in 2018 19 38% in 2019 20 39.4% in 2021 and it rose up to 45.5% in 2021 22 fine so it in last 5 years it has consistently increased not reduced so the second statement becomes wrong here 
and if the second statement is wrong if you eliminate the second statement you will come to the answer which is a right <clears throat> 1 and 3 look at the eighth questions eighth, eighth question <clears throat> now it is from manrega with reference to mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme consider the following statement now why we are asking these questions uh, because these are the flagship programs right upsc may ask you questions from the contemporary issues uh, so this scheme becomes important in that sense now the first statement is the wage rates of uh, mg narega workers are revised annually based on the cpi rural laborers now this statement is wrong it is revised based on cpi agriculture laborers so the indicator is taken here is cpi agriculture laborer so first statement becomes wrong before going to the second statement read the third statement minimum half minimum half of the workers enrolled under the scheme has to be women this statement is also wrong why one third of the uh, beneficiaries or worker enrolled should be women so it is one third not half so third statement is wrong first statement is wrong uh, read second statement at least 60% of the workers undertaken under the scheme must be related to land and water conservation. This statement is right because uh, for the development, local development of the villages, it is very important that the infrastructural development is happening in terms of creating assets uh, using the land and water conservation because the rural India requires these kind of support in terms of land and water conservation. So it has given an undue uh, importance in the works related to MG Narega. So second statement is right here, but they are asking incorrect. So answer will be B. Answer will be B. <clears throat> Fine. Now, next question, ninth. Okay, let me see if there is any comment. CPI agriculture labor. Yes, uh, Amarnath, you are right here. Vikram Singh is saying, I think answer for question 5 should be B. Let me look at that, Vikram. Uh, no, Vikram, uh, in fifth question, the first st statement is also uh, right. Agriculture sector has more employment elasticity as compared to other sector of the economy. That statement is also right there. Okay, now look at the question number nine. Fine. So, regarding the post devolution revenue deficit grant recommended by Finance Commission for the financial year 2022 and 23. Consider the following statement post devolution revenue deficit. What does it mean that after the devolution of the taxes has happened? Then if there is a gap between the revenue of the state with the given uh, devolution uh, number that deficit has to be compensated through a post devolution revenue deficit grant right now look at the statements here. The word post devolution revenue deficit grant is explicitly mentioned in the article 275 of the Indian constitution. Now this kind of statements are when it is used explicitly mentioned the word explicitly means mentioned in the Indian constitution there is a red flag you need to be very aware of that. So uh, it comes through the article 275 which is right but the term post devolution revenue deficit grant is not mentioned in the article 275 of Indian constitution. So the first statement becomes wrong here. Second, it is mandatory for, for the union government to release this grant to all states irrespective of their financial position. It is wrong. It need not be given to all state based on their financial situation or financial position finance commission would recommend that this amount should be given to which states so for example 2022 23 finance commission have chosen 14 states 
to be given post devolution revenue deficit grant fine so statement one is wrong statement two is wrong correct option d neither one and two now see the tenth question with re with reference to budget of union government of india the money spent on which of the following are included in the capital expenditure now it is a very static very basic question uh, i expect you to write the answer for 10th in the comment section quickly write the answer for 10th because it is very static and uh, you can say conceptual question fine you keep posting your answers here let me discuss this now we are looking at capital expenditure now what we call as capital expenditure generally we understand any expenditure which is made for creating an asset which will provide you returns in the future this is what capital expenditure is now there could be various types of it but in core we understand this way that capital expenditure means whenever i ex exp uh, expend i incur any expenditure on something creating an asset which will provide returns in future now look at the options given acquiring fixed and intangible assets yes it is a capital expenditure upgrading an existing asset when you upgrade something returns will increase in future so this expenditure will also come under capital expenditure repairing an existing asset if the returns from an asset is uh, stopping or stagnating because of any issues with the asset you need to spend money to repair it so that the uh, return should be continued so upgrading and repairing of the existing asset will also come under capital expenditure now repayment of loan here you if you have understanding of capital expenditure in this way that always asset should be created you will say that repayment of loan how we are creating an asset here but it is also a capital expenditure why because capital expenditure means either you create an asset which will provide you returns or any expenditure which is reducing your liability in the balance sheet so loans when you repay the loans your liabilities are reducing and because of this reason since the liabilities are reducing we can consider repayment of loan also in capital expenditure so all of them are correct answer would be d here yes amarnath 10th is d yashi uh, what is your question how this counted under liability which one see uh, repayment of loan as i explained to you it is reducing the liability because if you have suppose you have taken a loan now this loan is your liability you have to uh, spend interest over it over a period of time so it is your liability you have taken a loan principal amount and you are paying interest over it so when you repay the uh, loan what will happen your in liability side will reduce so in that sense it is a capital expenditure fine now uh, let's look at next question 11 no it is okay fine so 10 question we had uh, first 10 question from economy next question from economy is 61 61 look at this question with reference to deficit financing with reference reference to deficit financing consider the following statement now first before we go into the statement what do we mean by deficit financing deficit financing means that you are incurring expenditure more than your revenue there or whatever your income is you are spending more than that so there is a deficit created now deficit financing means you are finding sources to compensate this deficit now this external sources 
basically is a kind of debt you are taking to fill that gap between expenditure or and income right this is basically the revenue sorry uh, deficit financing now look at these statements here it is a policy which aims at generating funds to finance the deficit which results from excess expenditure over revenue so if you understand the meaning of deficit financing statement one is right it is just explaining what deficit financing means second it adversely affects the investor to invest more in the economy now this statement uh, to understand this statement you must understand that deficit financing is inflationary in nature why because you have a gap uh, your income is uh, less your expenditure is high and there is a gap between that you want to fill this gap by borrowing money so what you are doing you are introducing more money here just to fill the deficit here so when more money is available it will be defi uh, definitely inflationary in nature so in the market whenever def uh, deficit financing happens market inflation will increase now when inflation increases so labor charges will increase when labor charges are increasing cost of production increases so the investors who want to invest in a particular market uh, they will feel hesitant why because production cost has increased because of inflation and this inflation is being caused because of this deficit financing that is why we can conclude from here that it adversely affects the investor to invest more in the economy so statement two is also right here so both the statements are correct option c is correct here 62 with reference to off budget borrowing consider the following statements now the, look at the word off budgeting off budgeting means it is not included in the budget clear itna samajh mein aata off budgeting ka matlab hai ki it is outside the purview of the budget tabhi usko hum off budgeting keh rahe hain now look at these statements these are the loans that public sector undertaking take on behalf of both union and state government yes the state government or the union government is not directly borrowing money they are allowing the institutions like public sector undertaking to take loans on behalf of center or state okay so this is called off budget borrowing first statement is correct second statement these these constitute one of the largest items in the fiscal deficit of the government now look at the word again off budget borrowing if it is outside the budget definitely it will not be included in fiscal deficit calculation so the second statement becomes wrong here so you know option 1 is correct option 2 is wrong third the interest payment for such borrowings is made out of the consolidated fund now you need to know this fact that it is not uh, the principal of the borrowing is not on the consolidated fund of india but the interest payment which is taken care of by the state or the union is on the consolidated fund right so third statement the interest payment for such borrowing is made out of the consolidated fund is correct so answer is 1 and 3 which is b they are asking correct option fine so answer will be b here now look at the 63rd question recently reserve bank of india has introduced standing deposit facility in this context realization of standing deposit facility is becoming all the more important in order to so basically it is asking the function of sdf standing deposit facility uh, if you understand what it means it is basically a tool for rbi to extract money from the market right now you will say that they can do it from reverse revo uh, procedure as well yes they can do it but the unique feature of this is it does not require collateral so without giving government securities they can uh, suck in uh, money from bank without any collateral at a shorter period of time so standing deposit facility is read the third statement 
इट विल अलाउ आर बी आई टू ऑब्जॉर्व एक्सेस लिक्विडिटी फ्रॉम कमर्शियल बैंक विदाउट एनी कोलेट्रल सो आंसर विल बी सी हियर करेक्ट इट डज नॉट रिक्वायर कोलेट्रल वर्क सिमिलर टू रिवर्स रेपो बट हेयर कोलेट्रल इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड now look at the 64th question consider the following statement with respect to the agri stack project now agri stack project uh, in general you must understand that it is uh, a ecosystem kind of uh, platform created for the farmers where farmer will be having a digital identification and service services can be provided on these platforms right so look at the statements here it is an ecosystem for facilitating the delivery of digital services to farmers yes it is the motive of creating agri stack second thing uh, agri stack is of federal in nature federal in nature means that these are decentralized the data uh, stored in the agri stack will be owned by the state governments right so read the second statement agri stack is a federated structure in which ownership of data is with the states only and no private company is involved in developing the federated farmers database statement 2 is also correct now look at the third statement under the program each farmer will have a unique digital identification as i told you yes they will be given unique id for this and these ids are also uh, connected with the aadhar as well right so here all the statement with this particular agri stack project is correct so answer will be d here now look at the 65th question which of the following statement correctly defines gross value added now you see gross value added uh, calculation is very basic uh, sometimes upsc also ask you these kind of question how to calculate gdp how to calculate gva uh, factor price market price so those formulas uh, in your basic ncert which is given you must be very aware of that now you see gva at basic prices is nothing but GB, gva at factor cost plus the production taxes net production taxes now what do we mean by net production taxes it will include production taxes minus production subsidies so gva at factor cost plus production taxes minus production subsidies will provide you gva at basic prices now look at the options here option b look at this gva at basic price is equal to gva at factor cost plus net production taxes in net production taxes it is production tax minus production subsidy so answer will be b here which is a very straight forward question here fine so these all are the questions uh, from indian economy section fine uh, now uh, as prelims is approaching uh, i would suggest all of you to revise the static portion or the conceptual things which are uh, given in the syllabus of uh, indian economy Uh, because based on your conceptual understanding you will be you will see that you will be able to eliminate a lot of uh, statements there right because what they want in indian economy from you one is conceptual clarity second that you understand the context in which these static informations are used in current affairs so they will pick an area from the current affair frame statements which will be conceptual in nature so having conceptual clarity in all the topics in indian economy is very important before you go for prelims examination so in the last month definitely try to revise more on the static area right so uh, this is it from my side from indian economy now next rajwardhan sir will come and discuss environment and science and tech with you thank you so much
Hello everyone. Uh, so first of all, we'll discuss about environment and ecology, and then we'll discuss about uh, science and technology. So first question from environment is question number fifty-one. Right. So let us start with the first question. Fifty-one. Consider the following statements regarding the competition in an ecosystem. Right. So competition is a kind of biotic interaction. Uh, let us consider the statements first. Competition occurs only when closely related species compete for the same resources that are limiting. Right. So this statement is an incorrect statement. Why it is incorrect? Because we know that competition is even there. amongst the individuals of same species it is not only amongst the uh, species which are closely related related it can be amongst the individuals of a particular species as well so first statement that's why becomes incorrect statement second two species cannot coexist if they compete for identical resources right so this statement is also an incorrect statement right why because see when competition is there there may be sharing of resources resources may be shared and that sharing of resources is called as resource partitioning right when resources are partitioned between uh, different species which are competing they will be able to coexist right it is not that species which are competing won't be able to coexist with resource partitioning they will be able to coexist and that's why even second statement is incorrect statement right second statement says that two species cannot coexist if they have uh, if they compete for identical resources that is not the case they can coexist if resource partitioning is there and that's why both these statements are incorrect statements answer is d neither one nor two right question number 51 answer is d next now 52 which of the following conditions is are essential for speciation now what is speciation speciation is formation of new species right when evolution occurs speciation speciation is the important process that is going on right where uh, new species are getting formed where one species give rise to a new and distinctly uh, distinctly different species right so they have explained speciation here so let us consider the statement first the new populations must must not interbreed right so this is one of the important conditions for speciation to occur because if a particular species is giving rise to two different populations and if they are able to interbreed then there is no speciation there is no uh, formation of new species because when they interbreed they will give rise to a uh, species which may not have different characteristics and that's why the uh, population getting formed after the division must not interbreed first statement is a correct statement second there must be a physical separation between the population right so what we are asked we are asked to find out the conditions essential for speciation see there are two types of speciations that you must be uh, aware of first is allopatric and second is sympatric allopatric speciation is the process or it is the speciation which occurs because of the geographical isolation in allopatric Uh, speciation we need physical separation but for sympatric speciation there is no physical separation even if habitat is same they depend on different resources from that particular habitat and that leads to that different dependence on different resources leads to formation of new species right so second statement is a uh, is an incorrect statement it is not essential that physical separation should be there amongst the uh, amongst the population in order to speciation in order speciation to occur no second statement is incorrect third the genetic makeup of the population must be different right so if there is differences if there are differences in the genetic uh, makeup of uh, of population then only we can say that okay new species have been formed right so third is uh, is uh, is a correct statement right so first and third statements are correct statement second statement is incorrect statement answer is c 1 and 3 only 52 answer is c right question number 52 answer is c so uh due to competition galapagos tortoise got extinct due to uh introduction of goats see uh, there may be certain instances there may be certain exceptions in that case but 
if we take into account competition as a concept, uh, competition occurs occurs uh, between the species or also and also it occurs between individuals of of same uh, same species, right? And competition need not always uh, the result of uh, or competition does not lead to uh, extinction of species always. Why? Because there may be different solutions for that particular competition, right? So. Uh, that may be the example, that may be an exception that you are, you are pointing out, not necessary a rule, right. So next date, next question 53, in which of the following strategies a species lacking in spatial traits such as spines, stringers or toxins mimics another species with such traits to avoid its predators, right. So uh, in order to attract prey, in order to uh, attract uh, in order to make sure that predators do not attack, different species exhibit a characteristic of mimicry, right? Where they mimic the characteristics which they might not possess, and as a result of that, they'll be able to protect themselves from other uh, other organisms or from their predators, right? So here we are asked uh, in which of the strategies a species lacking a species lacking spatial traits like spines, st uh, stingers or toxins which are used to protect a particular species against its predator, mimics another species with such traits to avoid its predators, right. So here that species does not have those characteristics but it is mimicking the characteristic of some other related species so that predator do not attack it and that kind of mimicry is called as uh, Batesian mimicry. Right, that kind of mimicry is called as Batesian mimicry. In Batesian mimicry, a species which do not have certain characteristic uh, mimics those characteristics. Right, so that is what is Batesian mimicry. Under uh, Mullerian mimicry, what happens? Uh, in Mullerian mimicry, uh, two varied species which have toxic characteristic, which may have, let us say, uh, ability to produce toxic materials, mimic the features of each other. Right. In the, in the case of Mullerian mimicry, what happens? Uh, the species are toxic in nature. That means they have certain kind of uh, characteristics which help them protect from their predators, right? So they mimic each other so that they are able to get additional characteristic and thus the predators from a wide range uh, will not attack those kind of organisms. That is what is Mullerian mimicry. In, Mule in Mullerian mimicry, what happens? Uh, toxic species mimic each other. In Batesian mimicry, what happens? A non-toxic species mimics toxic species, right? And then self-mimicry, self-mimicry is the mimicry where one part of the body mimics other part of same species. Same species uh, will be having, a part of same species will be having certain, certain uh, mimicry or certain characteristic. Uh, the other part will mimic that particular characteristic in order to protect itself from predators. And then uh, camouflage, camouflage is change in the color according to the environmental conditions. So answer of this question is A, 53 answer is A. Next now, 54, consider the following situation. The vegetation of a particular area shifts from taller forest with higher species richness to shorter woody communities of lower diversity, right? So what is happening? A climax community is getting degraded into certain other uh, ecosystem. A climax community has been reached in ecological succession, which is a thriving ecosystem and that thriving ecosystem is getting degraded. And that kind of ecological uh, uh, or that kind of succession is called as retrogressive eco uh, ecological succession. Answer of this question is D. It is not secondary, for sure it is not secondary, it is not autogenic, it is not progressive because it is not getting evolved. It is retrogressive. Answer is D. Question number 54, answer is D. Question number 54, answer is D. Question is not saying necessarily essential in, uh, I think in this question you are talking about. You see, that again uh, depends on the interpretation, right? So, uh, we should give it to the, uh, to the examiner who has said that uh, statement. Fine. Next now. Next question, question number 54, uh, 55. 
Consider the following statement. So uh, the question is in the form of assertion and reason. Assertion: The region in in and around tropics has greater biodiversity than the temperate region. Right. So simple statement A is correct. Reason R: Tropical environments are less seasonal, more constant, and more predictable. Right. So uh, obviously in uh, tropical areas we uh, do not have changes in uh, season that frequently uh, seasons do not change if we talk about equatorial region there is no there are no seasons right so uh, the environmental condition in tropical areas are more constant and they are more predictable and as a result of that as a result of the uh, state of uh, equilibrium received by different species we have more species diversity in tropical regions in tropical region why do we have more biodiversity it is a function of stability that species receive in tropical areas. But in temperate areas, we have gone through ice ages. Ice ages that we have gone through till now primarily impacted temperate areas. And that's why in temperate areas, we do not have stability. And if stability is not there, there is no, uh, there is no uh, diversity of species. Right, so R is also a correct statement and R is correct explanation of A and that's why answer is A. Both A and R are true and R provides correct explanation of A. Answer of this question is A. 55, answer is A. Next now, 56. Which of the following statements regarding the ozone depleting potential is R incorrect? Right, so question is regarding ozone depleting potential. You must have heard about global warming potential GWP. But question is about ozone depleting potential. That means uh, the uh, the potential of different ozone depleting substances to deplete ozone layer. Let us consider the statements first. It is a measure of how much damage a chemical can cause to the ozone layer compared with a similar mass of trichlorofluoromethane. Right? CFC11. Trichlorofluoromethane means CFC11. So this statement is a correct statement. When we measure, when we measure global warming potential, we take carbon dioxide as a base for ozone depleting measure. Uh, we take trichlorofluoromethane as a base, right? And we compare the potential of other ozone depleting substances with uh, trichlorofluoromethane, right? So first statement is a correct statement. Second, carbon dioxide, apart from being a greenhouse gas, is also an ozone depleting substance. And its ODP, ozone depleting potential, is 10. This is incorrect. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Its uh, ozone depleting potential is 0. Right? And that's why second statement is incorrect. We are supposed to find out incorrect statement. Answer is B, 2 only. Question number 56, answer is B. Next now. Next, uh, 57. 57. Which of the following are the special features of an invasive alien plant species so that it is one of the main threats to the biodiversity of a region? Right. So uh, we know that uh, there is a evil quartet for loss of biodiversity and one of the factors in that evil quartet is introduction of invasive species. Right. So here we are supposed to find out the characteristics associated with invasive alien plant species which allow them to use up the resources and uh, as a result of that local biodiversity is threatened. First, characteristic features like pioneer species. Right. So this is one of the important features of invasive species as well because pioneer species they can uh, grow in harsh conditions. So if invasive plant species also have these kind of uh, also has this kind of characteristic where it is able to grow in harsh condition it will be able to it will be able to act as an invasive species because despite harsh conditions it will be able to grow so first is a correct statement regarding invasive plant species invasive alien plant species second a wide range of tolerance of climatic conditions so if they have wide range of tolerance for climatic conditions obviously they'll be able to grow in different environmental condition. Second is also correct. Third, specialist in distribution. If they are specialist in distribution, they will need certain kind of conditions so that they will be able to grow. But that is not the case. They are generalist in nature. They are not specialist. Third is incorrect. Right. So you can remove third. 
you can remove third, uh, you can eliminate B and C, you are left with A and D. In A and D, if you see only 6 is, uh, is, uh, the, uh, is different, so you can check 6 statement directly, but we will go through 4, 5th and 6th. Fourth is short generation time, right? So as they have short generation time, they will be able to grow rapidly. Uh, fifth, rapidly, uh, relatively small amount of DNA in their cell nuclei. So if they have small amount of DNA in their cell nuclei, they will be able to divide and grow, divide and multiply, multiply uh, in a fast manner compared to those species which have uh, more DNA in their cell nuclei, right? So this is also an important characteristic of invasive alien plant species or in general invasive alien species. Sixth is long flowering and fruiting periods, right? So this is also one of the important characteristic of invasive, uh, invasive alien plant species because if they have long flowering and fruiting period, they will be able to uh, grow uh, in different season. Otherwise, if they have only restricted time period in which they will be able to bear fruits and flowers, then they won't be, won't be able to grow that rapidly, right? So if they have long flowering uh, period, they'll be able to grow rapidly, right? So uh, answer of this question is D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, which is mentioned in option D, 57, answer is D. Next now, 58, 58, simple question it is, uh, which of the following statements is R correct? First. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is a scientific body established in 1988 by the World Meteorological Organization and the United Nations Environment Program, right? So this is the first statement that you must have came across when you read IPCC, right? First statement is correct. Second, it has a secretariat in Nairobi and is hosted by the United Nations Environment Program. This is incorrect. It has its secretariat in Geneva and it is hosted by WMO, World Meteorological Organization. Second statement is incorrect statement. Uh, see, UNEP secretariat is there in Nairobi, but uh, UNEP does not host, it does not host IPCC. IPCC, IPCC is hosted by, uh, IPCC is hosted by World Meteorological Organization, which is headquartered at Geneva. Second statement, that's why is incorrect. Third, IPCC does not conduct its own research, but instead evaluates and synthesizes the existing scientific literature on climate change, right? So that must be the feature that you must have read about IPCC. First and third statements are correct. Answer is B, 1 and 3 only. 58 question answer is B. Next now. Next is uh, 59. Consider the following statements. First, Mangrove forests only grow at tropical and subtropical latitudes near the equator, right? So this statement is a correct statement, right? Uh, mangrove forests only grow at tropical and subtropical uh, latitudes near the equator, right? So they don't, uh, they won't be able, they are not able to withstand freezing temperatures and that's why we do not see mangroves beyond subtropical region or subtropical latitudes. First statement is a correct statement. Second. Uh, Sundarbans, Sundarban is the world's largest single patch of mangrove forest, right? Correct statement it is. Third, all the mangrove trees grow in areas with low oxygen soil where slow moving waters allow fine sediments to accumulate, right? So generally, uh, we get mangroves uh, in, the, uh, in the coastal region and in the coastal region uh, where, especially in the estuarine region where we have low oxygen conditions and the sediments are gathered by the roots, stilt roots of mangroves, there we are able to see mangrove species, right? So third statement is also a correct statement. Fourth, India is the country with the most mangroves followed by Indonesia. Incorrect statement, uh, Indonesia is the country with largest share of mangrove forest. For, uh, fourth statement is incorrect. So answer of this question is C, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 and 3. 59, answer is C. Next now, 60th question. Some animals can use a technique called echolocation to determine the location of object in order to navigate, hunt, identify, identify friends and enemies and avoid obstacles. Which of the following animals use this technique? Right. So eco navigation, uh, eco location is a technique to determine the location of an object on the basis of reflected sound. Right. We know that there are species which emit sound radiations, which emit sound waves and those sound waves are collected back, right? So on the basis of reflected sound waves, 
they are able to know about obstacles they are able to know about their pre uh, they are able to know about predators, predators and all right so that is what is eco -lo uh, location right so uh, flying foxes that means fruit bats fruit bats are a are a specific type of bats under a family of bats called as pteropodidae and these flying foxes do not use echolocation right flying foxes that is fruit bats of pteropodidae family do not use uh, echolocation right so first is incorrect first is not uh, uh, first or flying foxes are not the species which use echolocation whales use it uh, oil bird use it and hedgehog also use echolocation 234 is the correct choice 234 is the correct choice which is mentioned in answer uh, which is mentioned in uh, option b answer of this question is b 2 3 and 4 68th question answer is b right now uh, next question is 85 85 Next now, 85, Crimson Rose found in the Western Ghats and is known for its strong migratory tendencies is a species of butterfly, right? So it is in news, it is, you must have read it uh, as a part of your current affairs, uh, Crimson Rose, they are uh, a butterfly species and they are known for migration, especially migration from India to Sri Lanka. Right, so they are generally seen in Western Ghats and also in the Odisha as well as West Bengal region. Right, so answer of this question is A. 85, answer is A. Next, 86. Which of the following statements regarding the recently performed Asian water bird census 2022 is are correct? Right, so Asian water bird census 2022. First statement, it is a citizen science initiative jointly coordinated by the Bombay Natural History Society and Wetlands International South Asia, which is a correct statement. Asian Water Bird Census is a joint initiative of, it is a joint initiative of BNHS, Bombay Natural History Society and Wetlands International for uh, of South Asia, right? So first statement is correct. Second, the highest number of water birds count, water birds count are reported from West Bengal. So close to 30,000 water birds were reported from West Bengal and least uh, that is close to 60 were reported from Meghalaya. In Meghalaya, we have least count of water birds. Third, lesser whistling duck is the most abundant water bird in India as, as per the Asian water bird census 2022, which is a, a correct statement, right? So lesser whistling duck is the most widespread uh, water bird that we have. First and third are correct. Uh, sorry, all these statements are correct statements. Answer is D, 1, 2 and 3. 86, answer is D. Next now, 87. Which of the following statements regarding the carbon bomb is are correct? Right. So this term carbon bomb was used uh, in a report given by the Guardian. Right. So let us uh, consider the statements first. It is an oil or gas project that will result in at least a billion tons of CO2 emissions over its lifetime. Right, so this term carbon bomb is used for those projects, those projects of oil and gas exploration, which will lead to uh, emission of uh, over 1 billion tons of CO2 emissions. Right, so first statement is correct. Second, Lingo, uh, it is, Lingo is a global initiative to contain the release of uh, the carbon bombs. Right, so uh, Lingo stands for, Lingo stands for live it in the ground. Right, it is an initiative. Uh, called as live it in the ground so that uh, the dependency on oil and gas will not be there. They will remain inside the ground. They will be unutilized and as a result of that, there will be no emission of, uh, of, uh, of greenhouse gases, right? So Lingo is a global initiative to contain the release of carbon bombs. That is a correct statement. Both these statements are correct. Answer is C, both 1 and 2. 87, answer is C. 88. Which of the following are the potential consequences of the Arctic amplification, right? So what is Arctic amplification? It is a phenomenon which is uh, seen in Arctic region where uh, the rise in temperature or global warming is more compared to other parts of the world, 
right in arctic region global warming is more and as a result of arctic amplification we have certain consequences we are supposed to find out those consequences first releasing greenhouse gases responsible for global warming right so if more arctic arctic amplification is there it will lead to emission of more methane and carbon dioxide which is trapped inside the permafrost of arctic region right so that will lead to additional release of greenhouse gases which is correct second releasing long dormant bacteria and viruses right so there are there are zombie uh, zombie bacteria and viruses which are there in the uh, in the permafrost region but as it melts because of arctic amplification we may see release of those zombie uh, bacteria and viruses second is also correct third enhance moisture and extreme rainfall events in india right so this is also a correct statement because of arctic amplification there will be there will be more moisture availability in the uh, in the air and as a result of that across the world including india will have more rainfall events extreme rainfall events will be there right so all these statements are correct statements regarding arctic amplification answer of this question is d 1 2 and 3 88 answer is d 88 answer is d okay so 59 uh, statement 3 is saying all so it is incorrect let me check it Denying. all of the mangrove trees uh, grow in areas with no mangroves they are able to grow only in the regions where we have uh, anaerobic conditions low oxygen conditions right so uh, it is not incorrect statement it is a prime condition uh, that is needed for see don't don't fall for these words all only right it is not that uh, if terms extreme terms like all only are used in a, in a particular statement then it will be wrong for sure no that is not the case you should become more alert in that case you should reread that particular statement right it is not that it will be incorrect for sure no that should be uh, that uh, approach is not a correct approach right then uh, hedgehog have spines then two hedgehog the uh, we we have discussed it in the context of echolocation that means use of sound sound radiation sound waves to uh, to find out their place to navigate right it is in that context we have discussed it question 60 should be a no it is not the case it is 2 3 and 4 only question uh, 60 it's 2 3 and 4 only hedge is a rat why it would it would use echolocation see they are not exactly rodents no uh, hedgehog though they appear like rodents they are uh, they belong to certain other family right let me tell you the uh, name of that particular family hedgehog they are uh, they are of the order uh, ulipotifala right ulipotifala is the order to which they belong to they are not considered as rodents you should be aware of this they are not considered as rodents they are not rodents for sure fine so 60th question answer is answer is b only 2 3 and 4 60th question answer is b only 2 3 and 4 fine so uh, that is about environment questions now we will move to science and technology questions first question is 21 right now science and technology is is uh, bit on the uh, difficult side the questions of science and technology were difficult question they were not the questions from traditional areas that generally we focus on and that's why you'll find these questions bit difficult so let us consider first question 21st consider the following statements first as the neutrinos do not have charge they do not have anti particles right so uh, this statement is an incorrect statement yes neutrinos do not have charge they are uh, they are the elementary particles which do not have charge which are very light they are very light and they travel at the speed of light but that does not mean they do not have anti particles right whenever generally whenever 
a term neutrinos is used we are referring to both neutrinos as well as anti neutrinos so neutrinos also have anti particles first statement is incorrect statement right so uh, neutrinos yes they do not have charge but that does not mean they will not have anti particles first statement is incorrect second out of four fundamental forces neutrinos interact only with gravity and weak force right so it should be force weak force fine so uh, this statement is a correct statement see neutrinos do not have charge they are neutral so if that is the case they will not interact with electromagnetic force right so uh, we know there are four fundamental forces first is electromagnetic strong nuclear weak nuclear and gravitational force so electromagnetic force they will not react with they will not interact with why because they are neutral right also they are not affected by strong nuclear force they are not affected by strong nuclear force they only interact with gravity and weak nuclear force which is also called as weak force right so second statement is a correct statement second statement is correct first is incorrect answer is b two only we are supposed to find out correct answer is b 21 answer is b next now 22 consider the following statements regarding kamike's drone right so kamike's drone was the term uh, in news because of ukraine russia war right so Kam kamike's drones they are a kind of drone which are able to act like cruise missiles they uh, go in a particular area enemy area and they'll be able to explode and that's why uh, the they will be able to or they are also called as suicide drones they are also called as suicide drones let us consider these statements kamike's drone so russia used shaheed which is drone procured from iran right so iranian drone Ir iranian kamike's drone known as shaheed was used in uh, used in ukraine russia war by russia first statement it is an aerial weapon in which munition can wait passively around the target area for some time and attacks only only once a target is located right so they will be able to hover around the enemy area and once they locate uh, target asset they'll be able to explode right they'll be able to attack right so first statement is a correct statement regarding kamikaze's drone and that's why they are called as as they are able to hover around enemy area they are also called as uh, loitering munition they can loiter in a particular area and that's why they are called as loitering munition first statement is correct second it fits in the niche between cruise missiles and unmanned combat aerial vehicles right so it is a kind of uh, uh, means it is a kind of uh, technique which is in between cruise missile technology and unmanned uh, unmanned aerial combat vehicles ucavs right so second statement is also a correct statement regarding kamikaze drone this is important statement and uh, important question kamikaze drone you can uh, you can read more about kamikaze drone in india uh, we have a uh, we have a uh, israeli uav and we uh, that israeli uav is a kamike kamikaze drone right it is called as uh, harop harop is uh, israeli uav that is kamikaze drone right so both these statements are correct answer is c both 1 and 2 22 answer is c next now 23 ethylene glycol is a useful for which of the following purposes right so ethylene glycol is also in use because of uh, its traces that are that are getting found in syrup that is uh, that is developed or that is manufactured produced in india and that syrup is leading to lots of deaths in various countries recent example is uzbekistan in uzbekistan we have uh, witnessed certain deaths because of the syrup imported from india which had traces of ethylene glycol right so uh, it is used as uh, antifreeze agent it is used in pharmaceutical vehicles it is used in cos cosmetic industry but for sure it is not used in solvents in food and beverage industry right because it has uh, abilities similar to uh, ethanol it has abilities similar to ethanol and that's why it is harmful to human health and that's why it is not used in food and beverages industry fourth is incorrect first three are correct answer is c one two and three question number 23 answer is c question number 23 answer is c
fine so uh, you want me to verify echolocation i'll verify it but uh, as of now answer should be question number 60 you are still in question number 60 answer should be 2 and 3 but i'll verify i'll verify it right and if any uh, changes will be there uh, means in the in the model answers you will see those changes fine so let's move to next question now don't uh, get stuck in uh, in that question let's move next to question number 23 answer is answer is 1 2 and 3 mentioned in option c next now 24 consider the following statements regarding wormholes right so what are wormholes a uh, wormhole is a tunnel like connection that has that is there in space time fabric and this tunnel like uh, connection is a is a special solution given to the equations of einstein's theory of relativity right as it looks like a tunnel uh, carved out by let's say a worm uh, in an apple it is called as wormhole right so it is a special solution uh, describing uh, einstein's theory of relativity that connects two distinct points in space or time uh, via a tunnel right via a tunnel it links two points in space and time and it tries to provide solutions to uh, solutions to the equations of theory of relativity of einstein and that's why it is called as wormhole right let us consider the statements first a wormhole is a rupture in space and time and is considered a bridge between two remote regions in the universe right so this statement is a correct statement regarding wormhole it is a kind of rupture right it separates space and time it is a kind of tunnel and that's why it appears like a uh, rupture right so first statement is a correct statement second they are inconsistent with einstein's theory of relativity this statement is an incorrect statement because a uh, wormhole is provided as a special solution for the equations of uh, theory of relativity of einstein right so second statement is incorrect first is correct answer is a one only 24 answer is a 24 answer is a next now 25th question 25th consider the following statements regarding the electromagnetic waves right so uh, when electromagnetic waves are formed first neither stationary charges nor charges in uniform motion but only accelerated charges can produce electromagnetic waves this statement is a correct statement electromagnetic waves are only produced by accelerating charges because these accelerating charges produce electric field uh, which in turn produces magnetic field right so accelerating charges produce electric field and that electric field in turn leads to production of magnetic field field so this alternatively changing magnetic and electric field uh, gives rise to electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves are produced from accelerating charges which firstly produce electric field that electric field gives way to magnetic field so this alternate between electric and magnetic field leads to production of electromagnetic waves right so electromagnetic waves are not produced from uh, from stationary charges because stationary charges produce electrostatic field stationary charges produce electrostatic field and uniform motion charges produce magnetic field there is no alternate between uh, these uh, these fields in case of stationary charges and uh, charges with uniform motion and only that's why only accelerating charges produce electromagnetic waves first statement is correct second the velocity of light depends on electric and magnetic properties of the medium right so this statement is also a correct statement velocity of light depends on the medium through which it is passing and which properties uh, the electric and magnetic properties of the medium right so second statement is correct third in microwave ovens the frequency of the microwave is matched to the resonant frequency of water molecules right so the uh, we, in uh, uh, what is the application of uh, microwaves microwaves so microwaves are used in microwave ovens where the frequency of microwave is matched to resonate frequency of water molecules right so as it it matches with the frequency of mo water molecules energy of microwaves will be passed on to the uh, passed on to the water molecules and as a result of energy getting in water molecules water molecules 
uh, their temperature increases and that leads to heating up of food that consists of uh, that consists of water molecules right heating up of food that consists of water molecules is the result of passing of energy from microwaves to the uh, to the my, uh, water molecules right so second state a third statement is also a correct statement all these three statements are correct statements regarding electromagnetic waves answer is d 1 2 and 3 question number 25 answer is d next 26 which of the following statements regarding the stellar occultation is are correct right so what is occultation occultation is uh, is the phenomenon is a, is a uh, uh, is a phenomenon that occurs when a starlight is blocked by certain other other object be it moon or planet when starlight is blocked by other object we call that particular phenomenon as occultation right so let us consider the uh, uh, consider the statements first it occurs when as viewed from a earth a bright star passes behind a planetary ring system right so that statement is a correct statement when a bright star that means uh, when star passes behind when it goes behind a planetary ring system we won't be able to see the starlight and as a result of that occultation occurs right so first statement is a correct statement second the main reason for observing stellar occultations is that they can be used to probe ring systems and atmospheres in the outer solar systems right so that is the correct statement regarding uh, regarding the uh, use of occultation generally they are used to study uh, the uh, they are used to probe ring systems and atmospheres in the outer solar systems right so both these statements are correct statements regarding occultation answer of this question is uh, both 1 and 2 26 answer is c both 1 and 2 we are supposed to find out correct statements in question number uh, 23 internet shows statement 4 as correct 23 solvent in food and beverage industry see it, it will not be used right it is toxic it is toxic it affects central nervous system and that's why uh, it it should not be the case right because if it is used in food or uh, as a uh, solvent in food and beverage industry it will have its consequences on human health and that's why it will not be used right you can check ethyl ethylene glycol uh, is a uh, is a trace element found in the syrup that is produced in India and that is leading to uh, various cases in different countries right so please verify your sources next now next is 27 Tarang 27 right 27 which of the following statements regarding true random number generator Tarang T R N G are correct right so what is uh, what is a random number generator generally these random number generators are used in cryptography in order to make cryptography more secure we use a technique called as uh, prime factorization a technique called as prime factorization is used and uh, if we have a random number then that random number will provide us a more security for cryptography right and that is the use of these random number generators and there is true random number generator uh, which is developed by uh, a center in IISC Bangalore question is regarding that first statement and it is a question of current affairs first in a true random number generator random numbers are generated using the random motion of electrons right so they use random motion of electrons in order to generate random numbers first statement is correct second Tarang can improve data encryption and provide improved security for sensitive digital data. That is the use of random, num random number generators. Second is also correct. Third, uh, min entropy is a parameter used to measure the performance of uh, Tarangs. Right. So this is also a correct statement. A parameter. So uh, this is this is a parameter. For example, uh, in order to measure the performance of supercomputers, we use flops. So uh, that way in order to measure the performance of these number random number generators a parameter is used called as min entropy right so it is a term used for uh, for identifying the performance of these random number generators all these three statements are correct answer is d 1 2 and 3 27 answer is d 
नेक्स्ट नाउ ट्वेंटी एट विच ऑफ दॉलोइंग आर दॉर्ट रेंज डिवाइसेस फॉर वायरलेस कम्युनिकेशन राइट सो फर्स्ट इज जिग्बी सो जिग्बी इज इज जनरली यूज फॉर फॉर ट्रांसफर ऑफ सिंपल डेटा लाइक data from sensors right it is primarily used for transfer of data from let's say sensors fitted in let's say ac right sensors fitted in uh, in our refrigerators so for the passage of that data right for the flow of that data we use a uh, we use a protocol uh, a technology and that technology is called as zigbee and primarily zigbee technology is used in smart homes and that's why zigbee is also called as smart home Uh, protocol zigbee is also called as smart home protocol first statement is a correct statement because zigbee is primarily used for uh, for short range data communication first is correct second ultra wide band right so ultra wide band again it is a short range wireless communication protocol that operates through radio waves right it is also a short range uh, wireless uh, data transmission protocol for short ranges right and uh, it allows uh, the uh, ultra wide band uwb enabled devices to to uh, share data at incredibly high speed right what is the advantage of uh, ultra wide band uwb its advantage is that it will be able to share data at very high speed compared to the traditional uh, technologies that we use like wifi and all right and third is wifi we know that wifi is a short range communication technology all these are correct statements regarding short range devices for wireless communication answer is d 1 2 and 3 28th question answer is d 29th consider the following pairs so on one hand we have plant hormones and on other we have uh, used in tissue culture for right so for what purpose we can use these plant hormones and we are supposed to find out pairs which are correctly matched first auxin so auxin and its uh, its used in tissue culture is for root in initiation right so this is a correct statement auxin is a plant hormone that is used uh, for the production of roots first is correct second cytokinine cytokinine is used for shoot formation which is also a correct pair right it is a plant hormone used for the production of shoot third uh, abscic abscisic acid and it is matched with fruit ripening which is incorrect right it is not abscisic acid it is ethylene which is a hormone used in fruit ripening right abscisic uh, acid is used to regulate regulate seed germination abscisic acid is a plant hormone yes it is also a plant hormone but it is used for regulation of seed germination it is not uh, used for fruit ripening for fruit ripening we use ethylene third is incorrect fourth uh, giberellin giberellin its use in tissue culture is for adventitious root formation right for the formations of adventitious roots we use we use uh, giberellin right third fourth is a correct pair only third is incorrect so 1 uh, to 4 are correct so only three pairs are correct answer is c 29th answer is c uh, 30th question which of the following statements regarding the quasi particles let me check uh, whether you have any doubt fine us fda approved uh, ethylene glycol as a food additive fine so see again means if that is that is the statement that uh, if that is the information that you are getting on internet i'll have to uh, verify it again so i'll verify question number 60 and 23 right so uh, i'll verify these two questions 60 and 23 fine next now uh, next is 30th question which of the following statements regarding the quasi particles is are correct right so what are quasi particles quasi particles are the particles which behave like particles in a particular medium only right in a particular medium system they will behave they will have the properties of uh, particles but outside that medium they won't be uh, able to show those properties right they won't be able to show properties like let's say spin and charge 
right so what are quasi particles they behave as a particle in a certain medium system only outside of it they don't show the properties of particles and that's why they are called as quasi particles let us consider the statements first uh, a quasi particle is a collection of quantum characteristics among particles operating in their own particle like way right so this statement is a correct statement uh, quasi particles uh, particle is a collection of quantum characteristic right so quantum characteristics are the characteristics sh shown by different particles for example uh, these properties we use in quantum computing superposition entanglement these are the quantum character characteristics which are shown by these quasi particles why because in their medium they act as particles right uh, right so first statement is a correct statement second unlike fundamental particles quasi particles do not have uh, fundamental properties like charge and spin this is incorrect right these quasi particles also have these quasi particles also have uh, these fundamental properties uh, the uh, properties of fundamental particles like charge and spin within that medium not outside of it right so within that medium they have these properties so third uh, second statement is incorrect statement they do have uh, fundamental properties like charge and spin second is incorrect first is correct answer is a one only question number 30 answer is a question number 30 answer is a right so uh, now next question is 71 next science and technology question is 71 right so you can see questions are not from the traditional topics generally uh, studied by students so you might have felt these questions a bit difficult. So next question is, Cordigold nanoparticles are derived from the synthesis of the extracts of Cordyceps militaris and gold salts to be used in drug delivery in the human body. What is Cordyceps militaris? Right? What, is, what it is? It is a mushroom. It is a fungus. Right, answer is C. And this was the news article that you must have came across in the Hindu. Right, it was a front page article in the month of November, and it uh, it is uh, the research done by uh, by the uh, University of Bodoland. Right, so answer is C. Seventy one answer is C. Right, what they have done, they have uh, improved the ability of gold nanoparticles uh, so that they'll be able to act as a better drug delivery uh, mechanism. Answer is C. 72. Which of the following is the role of BBX11 gene in plants? Right. So, BBX11 gene in plants, it is for, uh, it is related to green, greening of plants. Right. And that, that, that means it is related to biosynthesis of chlorophyll. Right. So, greening of plant depends on a gene called as BBX11. So, it is related to biosynthesis of uh, uh, chlorophyll. Answer is D. 72. Answer is D. Now, 73. Consider the following statements. So, question is in the form of assertion and reason. A. Assertion. Base editing is a better therapeutic tool to precisely and safely correct genetic mutations than the CRISPR-Cas9 nuclease system. Right. So, this statement is a correct statement because what is base editing? Base editing is a new approach for genome editing where uh, we, we are able to carry out point mutations. We are able to carry out point editing. A certain base we will be able to edit using base editing, right? And uh, this, is, this, is not, uh, this is not related to or this uh, mechanism of base editing works without without making double stranded breaks which are done in crispr cas9 right crispr cas9 breaks the strands of dna or rna as a result of which we are able to uh, we are able to uh, uh, modify genes using crispr cas9 but in case of base editing we are not editing strands we are only targeting a certain base of uh, of dna and as a result of that, it is called as point mutation, point editing, right? And as it is point, uh, point editing, it does not have the consequences like of the target breaks, right? Of the target mutations will not be seen in base editing.
First statement is a correct statement. Base editing is a better therapeutic tool to precisely and safely correct genetic mutations than CRISPR-Cas9. Why? Because in CRISPR-Cas9, there may be off the target uh, editing, but that is not the case in base editing because we are targeting a certain base point we are tar targeting. We are not targeting a line, which is the case with CRISPR-Cas9. Reason, double-stranded breaks while genome editing can lead to off-target effects. Right? In case of CRISPR-Cas9, we can witness double or we carry out double strand breaks. We break the strands and as a result of double strand breaks, we may have off the target uh, modification, which is a disadvantage of CRISPR-Cas9, which is not there in base editing. And that's why R is also a correct statement and R is correct explanation of A. And that's why answer is A. Both A and R are correct and R provides correct explanation of A, right? Answer of this question is A, 73, answer is A. Next, 74, which of the following statements is R correct? First, the Lagmurer blood get technique is a way of making supramolecular assembly in ultra thin films with a controlled layered structure and crystal parameters, right? So, uh, scientists have developed ultra thin uh, heteroprotein film uh, that can that can uh, make revolutions in food packaging and biomedical industry right they have developed films uh, with the help of proteins and those films can be used in biomedical as well as in food packaging industry and they have used certain uh, techniques for that uh, which is which is called as the technique is called as lag mural blood get technique and as a result of this blood, uh, law, uh, lag murer blood get technique, they are able to develop those films which have various kinds of properties like they are, they have excellent thermal and mechanical stability, right? They will be able to withstand long ranges of temperature. They will be able to withstand in harsh conditions of pH value as well, right? So that advantage they are getting in this particular technique of production of uh, films. First is correct. Second, ultra thin films. Second, recently India scientists have developed an ultra thin heteroprotein films using bovine serum, albumine and lysozyme. Right? So, this is a correct statement and this statement is related to the research that scientists in India have carried out. They have produced uh, a ultra thin film of heteroproteins using, uh, using bovine serum called as albumine and lysozyme. Right. So again, a current affairs based question it is. Both these statements are correct. Answer is C, both 1 and 2. 74, answer is C. Last, 75. Which of the following statements is are correct? First, Ancovax is India's first heterologous booster. Right. First of all, what are heterologous booster? Heterologous boosters are those vaccines which use different platform than the first two uh, doses of vaccines. Right. For example, in India, we had two doses of vaccines. So, in if uh, if in the case booster dose is is uh, taken by certain person, that booster dose might not be the you might not be using the platform which is same as the first two doses of vaccine. So, in that case, that third booster dose will be called as that third vaccine dose will be called as heterologous. It will be called as heterologous. Why? Because it is using certain different technique for the production of vaccine, right? So that is what is heterologous vaccine. And if it uses same platform, same technique, it will be called as homologous vaccine, right? So first statement, Ancovax is India's first heterologous uh, booster. It is incorrect. It is India's first uh, SARS-CoV-2 vaccine for animals. It is not heterologous booster. It is a vaccine for animals in India, right? So first statement is incorrect. Second, Heterologous boosters show higher vaccine efficient effectiveness than homologous boosters against COVID-19. Right, so this statement is a correct statement because there will be change in the uh, in the platform in the technique used for the development of vaccine for that particular booster dose, and as a result of this change, we will be able to have more effectiveness in the vaccine dose. Second statement is correct. First is incorrect. Answer is B two only. Question number 75, answer is B, right? So that is about questions from 
uh, science and technology as well. Right, so uh, science and technology was was relatively uh, difficult. Uh, means questions of science and technology were relatively difficult, right? But environment and uh, ecology was was moderate to easy. Certain questions were very easy. Certain questions were moderate. And so that is about this discussion of mock test two. Thank you. See you in the next class. Thank you.